Hey everyone, welcome to the Watch and Listen podcast. This is a podcast about watches. You can watch it on YouTube or you can listen to it on iTunes, Android, or wherever podcasts are downloaded. I host it with my friend Cameron Weiss of the Weiss Watch Company. He's a master watchmaker and he knows what he's talking about. This episode of the Watch and Listen podcast is brought to you by Crown and Caliber. Crown and Caliber is an online retailer of luxury watches. They have over 2,000 watches is in stock at all times. They are located in Atlanta, but can serve you anywhere in the world. You want to buy a watch, Rolex, Panerai, AP, Vacheron, Omega, one of the big players, check out Crown and Caliber first. Their selection and uh, let's call it aggressive pricing mean that you are unlikely to find a better deal elsewhere. Do you have an extra watch? Maybe you want to trade in, trade up, or trade out. Crown and Caliber wants to buy or trade for your watch watch as well. Just go to crownandcaliber.com, go on the buy, uh, uh, the trade sell tab, and the process is very easy. It literally takes five minutes. I've, I've actually done it before in trading two watches for one watch with Crown and Caliber. It was pimp, and I love my new watch. They have a, uh, a reasonable guarantee of what they are selling being the thing that you get, meaning if you order a watch and it's broken, it doesn't work, it stops working, you, you, Crown & Caliber will take care of you. They're good. They want you to be happy with your watch. If you drop it in the toilet uh, and then pee on it, well, you're on your own. But that's what reasonable people do. Check out Crown & Caliber with code MATT150, M-A-T-T-1-5-0, to get $150 off any purchase from the Crown & Caliber store. Uh, One-time use per customer on that code. So spend it wisely. We are also sponsored by... Beeline Coffee. I love me some Beeline Coffee. Let me tell you about this coffee. I just tried Beeline's Snapshot Espresso. I'm not like that big of an espresso person. I normally like a drip coffee with my AeroPress or like a pour over, but they've got this Snapshot Espresso blend. I ground it fine, threw it in the AeroPress, tried it. It was spectacular. I made like a triple espresso. It was super, super good. You just fill the AeroPress like halfway with it and you grind it a little finer than normal. But the Snapshot Espresso Bean, it was spectacularly tasty. I was so happy about that. Use code CHRONO at Beeline Coffee to get... Um, 15% off your entire order, big or small, no matter what it is, whether it's one bag of coffee or an entire annual subscription plan, we got you covered, code CHRONO. Now, uh, this episode of Watch and Listen is going to be a fun one. Adam Craniotes of Red Bar is in the studio. Red Bar is a, uh, a watch uh, collecting society, but it's an, it's an actual bar. It's a physical bar. You go drink at the bar, right? But it's a bar themed on whiskey and watch collecting, and they do events uh, around the uh, around the world and uh, as well as at their physical place. There are multiple red bars, um, including L.A. Uh, and also joining us in this one is uh, Marco Garace, who is of TLG Auto. He's an old-school Porsche guy. I've reviewed two of his cars uh, on the show before. And uh, although he was just hanging out with Adam this day and came in the studio, he brought a really nice collection of watches that made a great backdrop for us to have some interesting uh, discussions. So, Adam and Marco on the show. Enjoy this episode of Watch and Listen. Watch and listen podcast. Here we are on a Monday afternoon, Tuesday afternoon. What day is it? A uh, Wednesday. It's Wednesday. It's now. Wednesday. Yeah. Wednesday. It's a Wednesday afternoon. Hey, it's everybody. Be a Wednesday. What's happening, guys? Adam Cranio, it's in studio with us. Hello, sir. Cheers. Welcome. Come closer to your microphone if you can. Cheers. I know it's like is that you know it's Passover, so we lounge. But no, you're right. No, no, no. We gotta, <laughs> we gotta, we gotta, we gotta pay homage. Uh, thanks for having me, man. And uh, Marco, welcome. Your mic is on mute and t- off mute. Yeah. Janky mic. Yeah, janky it's not mic. janky. You're no, just <laughs> it's side piece mic. Your side piece mic. Side piece mic. Uh, Marco is a Porsche boy who brought these fatty rolls of watches. It was like Cranios was like, "Can my homie come?" And I was like, "Marco has found a way to weasel his way onto yes, the podcast. Well, and it's and, just and, and episode 12. Actually, yeah. He knows everyone. So. He knows everyone. I'm the I'm the odd man out. 
No, you're not. Hey, man. You're the guy. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, you're the you're the first friend that I made at a watch event. That's history. So that's a thing. That's worth something. Yeah. Owner, owner. Is it owner? Your owner, CEO, founder, founder, founder owner. Founder, what is it? What is your preferred pronoun? I think uh, I like founder. Founder of Red Bar. It means I did. Yeah, I, I founded so. I founded. Yeah, founder's yeah. good. What's a Red Bar? Uh, you know that is uh, the uh, <laughs> the sixty four dollar question. Um, the, uh, well, founder, hook it founder, up. <laughs> I found it. I found it. You know, Red Bar is actually it's it's a now a worldwide uh, collective of watch enthusiasts who get together. And talk smack about watches. Over that sounds drinks. fun. That sounds fun. It is fun. Is I, it global? It is global. We are now in like four continents. Hmm. In on. Wow. Yeah, North, South, Europe, Asia. We are in Europe. We are in Asia. We are in South America. Um, obviously, America. Africa. Step Canada. your game up. You know, we got a well, well, you know what? I've actually had inquiries from South Africa. I'm not surprised. Cape Town. Cape Town. Cape Town yeah. is, do they have water? They're they, going to run out soon. They're going to run out. Fortunately, they have a lot of wine. Um, welcome to the show, everybody. Let's right. check out Cameron Weiss on Instagram. Check out me on Instagram that strangely has Dak Shepard's, there, that's me, Dak <laughs> Shepard's profile he's, pulled up. He's quite a car guy. Though. Yeah, the smoking tire on Instagram. Yeah. Cameron M. Weiss on Instagram. Cranioats. On Instagram. They're my Remember? children and We're the, just, pie, the pie hole. And, and some watches. There's yeah. watches in here. Look, if you scroll down, you'll find watches. Yeah. And a lot of pictures of David Hasselhoff. It's a thing. A lot of pictures of David Hasselhoff. So, And, uh, of course, Red Bar Crew. Yes. Oh, I bought iClick Follow, embarrassingly. I, just fo <laughs> I follow you. I just found that one today. Fair enough. Yeah. And then uh, Marco, we drops in with his, his wristwatch underscore rabbit hole. Wristwatch yeah. underscore it's rabbit a, hole. hole it, it, it's deep. That's a new account. Yeah. So, uh, I, I left your microphone. Oh, on. All you right. could I'll talk. Just hold it then. Uh, new account. He normally does Porsches. So today I made up a theme. It was originally just going to be Crany Oats is here. And I made up a theme. It's about collecting. We're talking about collecting. Yeah. You're, an ex you're a professional collector. In some respects, yeah. Well, uh, at, at the very that. least, a collector's consultant. Yes. Right? I will, I will accept that. <laughs> I will, I will accept that too. Are there any normal watch collectors? No. Are they all fucking nuts like car people? They're nuts like car people. It's about how far does how far does the rabbit hole go? Um, it goes all the way, all the way down, all the way. Yeah. I mean, we can ask. You know, he's, he'll tell you because he named his account wristwatch uh, rabbit hole. Well, it starts with one, and then it's ten, and then it just it, keeps it going. like it's tattoos. An, it's an addiction. You have zero, one, yeah. or a hundred. <laughs> There's very little middle ground. Right. I right. feel like that. Well, yeah. it's you. It's the same kind of people that that collect cars, right? Except they don't have the space problems. You know, the overlap though is is surprising. Until it's not. Fact, until they get really mad when you talk about one on the other show. Oh no! Oh no! no. Oh, oh no! No, we're gonna so we're just keep this about watches. I will say uh, a good friend of mine out here, Raj, and he collects Porsches, and he's got actually some pretty pretty fine automobiles, and he's gotten into watches. And now he's actually moving some of his cars, and not because he needs the money for watches, but he's like, look, I don't have room for this stuff. I know. And he's shuttling them back and forth. He goes, and I can keep a bunch of watches yeah. in a box. I only got so many parking spaces. Yeah. You know? So it, it becomes an issue. It does. Yeah. And it, it's, a, it's a problem easily solved. And through. you can't drive a car into the bar. No, you can't. <laughs> You can I mean, no, you can. You can. You can. But it's a crime in most places. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's a faux pas. Yeah. So... Where do we where do we start a show about collections? Where do you start a show about collections? I, I think you, I think you begin at the beginning. You start at the yeah. beginning, or you start at the at the at the top and work down. Hmm. Like I want to be like, what is the biggest craziest collection that like I want to like well, you know, get punched in the face with the something you before have, we, we talk about buying your first Seiko a collection. Okay, and I think they're different types of collectors. You know, now I'm all over the place. I joke that I play the game to lose. I buy what I like. I wear what I buy. Mm -hmm. I'm not really overly concerned about how much I'm going to get if I have to sell it because, frankly, every watch that I buy, let's get that right in front of me. There, there we uh, go. Well, it sounds better when we do. It does. Trust me. Hello. Yeah, you're good. Every watch. No, every watch that I buy, I have the intention of keeping it forever. Now, obviously. I know uh, that feeling. Yeah. Like, I'm keeping this I'm forever. keeping this intentions. forever. <laughs> yes, the best in intentions. But here's the thing. Life intrudes. And then there are times you're going to have to move something. So fine. I get that. And then that can be a bit of a reckoning for some people when they see the hit. It's like when you buy a car, you drive it off the lot. Mm -hmm. 
and all of a sudden you can shave like 30, 40% off the value. Oh, and most, have. <laughs> and have. But most watches, I hate to say it, they're not really going to hold their value. You got a no. handful of pieces, you got Rolex. You got Patek Philippe. Yeah. You know, certain and only some editions, models and only from some them models. Even, yeah. Right? Yeah. You know, and then you, when we start getting into the vintage game, now talk about a rabbit hole. Yeah. And that market has exploded to the point where a lot of pieces you were able to buy in the past, frankly, they're becoming unobtainium. And, you know, I blame the internet. I, I feel like it. in the last three weeks, everyone is talking about Universal Geneve like it hasn't existed before. Okay, well, before. you know what? <laughs> and I, I remember when this became a thing. And it was Ben Clymer from Hodinkee who had a couple pieces and he started talking about it. And the guy has outsized influence, shall we say, in the industry. Yeah, yeah. And all of a sudden, a watch that you could buy all day long for $3,000, $4,000, now they're $7,000. Mm-hmm. Now they're $10,000. Now that people are talking twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000. Yeah. Now they're even popping up in auction. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's, it's, it's unbelievable. A, it's a thing. We are yeah. the tastemakers. We are the dreamers yeah. of dreams. <laughs> now, unfortunately, I have yet to have that effect on anything. So everything that I sell... <laughs> Alcohol. Drops yeah, like a rock. Drops like a rock. Um, but I tell people, at the end of the day, if you want an investment, buy real estate. If you're playing this game because it's passion, is something you care about, at the end, buy what you like, yeah. wear what you buy. That's what I do. Now, I have a be little bit cool of Be cool enough to be the tastemaker. If you mm, can. Yeah, one like of these that. days, who knows? Maybe one of my watches will be worth something because Adam owned it. I'm not holding my breath. I'll probably be dead when that happens. But now you've got other collectors, though, who are focused, laser like focus. I need, I want. Like Market Hawks? Super. Who? Like Market Hawks? Like they oh, watch Mark the at market. Hawks. I'm like, do I know this guy? Oh, Mark. Mark. Oh, Mr. Mark, Mark, no. Mark Hawk? at Hawks is, yeah. Uh, yeah, he's a big collector. Mr. Yeah, he's the, no, that's who I thought <laughs> he's you meant. Yeah. He's, he's a taste maker. Taste, he's quite the taste me, maker. Uh, me and Mark were having dinner later. Mark yeah. at Hawks. Yeah. yeah, you know, it's funny. We were trying to, we were trying to get together while I was out here, but, you know, just our schedules didn't, uh, they didn't quite work out. Uh, but yeah, but they're cats who, and whether they're looking for an investment or not, they've decided that they like, super compressor divers from the 60s yeah and then that's it you know they're people who like steel rolex sport models from the 70s and then they're probably that's gonna do it. well they'll do okay those guys are actually going to do just for or, or they're <laughs> never going to be able to buy a watch because they're too expensive well they don't, at this yeah. point they'll never own anything that's yeah, true well <laughs> it, yeah exactly what i don't like though is when you get to you know that safe queen area where you it's too expensive it's an investment and you're not going to wear it and you treat it with kid gloves, maybe you bring it out. And that these are the guys who have what I call the butterfly collection, where it's you open it up, everything's pinned, labeled. Maybe you have a nice little single malt with you and your glasses you just and, look your, at and your wood paneled library and your wing back leather chair. And God forbid somebody sneezes within five miles of this, whoosh, close the collection. Yeah. Oh God. And the car, can't car people have the yeah. same. There's, yeah. there's those people in of cars. Of course. As well. And at yeah. the end of the day, like drive it, wear it. But I understand. It's way easier to keep a watch not fucked up. Yeah. What's the excuse for not wearing a watch? You know, the wrist can actually be a fairly dangerous place. (laughs) Um, I mean, I I might trip. I might trip and fall. What? I stopped wearing a couple of mine. Wait, hold on a second. Into a door. Here we go. You are. Well, it was my grandfather's, and I can't replace it. But see, that's a good reason. That is it. No, that there's some things that yeah. I understand. Why don't you just like cast it in a crystal? Yeah, just mount it and lose sight. And just have it floating as a, as a paperweight on your desk. Underlight it, you know, really, yeah. as really ghoul it, yeah. ghoul yeah. it up, really <laughs> ghoul it up. I would say you, Do know, you have get, some get like some... old recordings of your grandpa. I can like talk to you, <laughs> okay, <laughs> with a flashlight. You know what? I, you know, we're joking, but this could be a thing. Yeah, right. Yeah, just, folks, just remember, this is our idea. <laughs> like, can we? I don't know how we do that, but let's lay claim to that. All right. Well, if it's sentimentally yeah. too valuable. To damage. Okay, we give you a pass. Yeah, it's sad. It is sad with. That's with one a, of the only passes with a watch that to not wear. I mean, I guess like there's some shit that looks like a fishbowl on your wrist. We bring that up from time to time. That's got to <laughs> be a little silly to wear out. Yeah, I mean, we see these cats, and you know, I would say the last thing you want to do is look like you snuck into your daddy's watch box. And you're, you know, and we see these oh, guys. Oh, that's funny. You're wearing like old man, rich, old rich man watch yeah, and a or, young guy. Or, or even, you know, it's it's like, you know, you want to dress up like dad. And you're wearing his shoes and his jacket and everything's too big. And, you know, oh, isn't that cute mm-hmm. when you're five years old? Now, when you're 30 years old and you're wearing a watch that just frankly is hanging over the side of your wrist, not really a good look. There's always that like, sure, you can. Yeah. <laughs> But should you? Yeah. So I do feel at some point there is a question of like, how does it look? Like, you know, aesthetically, 
I think one of the biggest, you know, things, yes, we talk about the provenance and the movement and the history of the brand, but at the end of the day, it kind of has to look good on your wrist. You kind of have to enjoy it. Um, so yeah. we see these guys where I'm just sort of like, you know, whereas a woman, you know, let's, let's, let's bring the fairer, stronger sex into this. They wear a watch that's larger than it should be. It's an accessory. It's on purpose. And it frankly looks great. Yeah. Women on, we, we I like men's that. watch on women. That works. You know, although we do watch, need to see more. Not a U-boat. <laughs> <laughs> Somehow that came up in conversation with my lady the other day. She's like, what was the name of that brand? I, I was like, you bro. Really, I do not hate on U-boat. I don't. A lot of cats do. Yeah, you can see them from space. They're just, they're That's they're important. fun. They are very fun. I just, yeah, at the end of the day. Have you been to the Ponte Vecchio recently? Not recently. So I, it sounds really <laughs> douchey to say that, Wait, but I, I happened yeah, to be there. Yeah, it was, I mean, it was there like two weeks ago. Does that count? <laughs> but not recently. Not recently. <laughs> but they, the U-boat store on the Ponte Vecchio. They have a U-boat store. Yeah, is wow. about half the size of this room. And it's a tiny room selling giant watches. So a repurposed phone <laughs> very booth. Very funny. Yeah. Well, All right. It's very. It was very funny the to see this little room and monster dissonance. There is, is part of it's part watches. of the experience. Yeah. So all right. So if you're starting a collection, yeah. where do you start with one? You start with one. You start with one. So what is what is the one? What should the one be? Again, it's it's a personal decision. If, there are a couple of factors here. Okay, aesthetics. One should be something you, should, you can wear a lot. Well, right? but it, look, it's aesthetics. What are you into? Some people like dressier pieces. Some people like casual pieces. Uh, if you're you know young enough and you know you wanted to start with a you know a Casio like a digital like a, a couple of G Shocks. I own forty or fifty. G Shock. Do so you I, really? Yeah, so I can't. Oh, we're gonna have to have you back for the G Shock show. It's on our list. Okay, yeah, I can't throw <laughs> stones here. These, it's part of my history. Um, but you know, maybe you own or have owned. No, I currently. Okay. <laughs> okay. I currently own. I currently own. <laughs> Just it's, making sure. It's becoming a, a bit of a problem. I'll tell you, it's easier to come home with a G Shock than it is a you know perpetual calendar. Yes. Patek Philippe. Um, <laughs> yeah. And to stay married. Here's I where you start also. with your G Shock ninety nine, the basic. But look, kids, okay, this is, they, they call it the three eyes. You know, obviously you've got three eyes there that basically they don't really do anything beyond just sort of spin around when you run the, you know, timer or the stopwatch. But it's a classic design. Uh, fits your wrist. Uh, and look, here's the thing. No one's making fun of you for wearing a G-Shock. G-Shock is definitely the okay, watch wait, guy's again. cheap wait. watch. Do you see that jammy, uh, the two on the left? Yeah, 800 yeah. bucks. So sapphire crystal, ceramic case back. GPS, uh, radio receiver, altimeter, barometer, <laughs> compass. This is a lot of things. Kitchen yeah. sink. Yeah. Um, I saw, I, crazy. Was, I admit I was browsing the G Shock website the other night. I found one that was like $2,500. Oh, they go up to $7,400. <laughs> yeah, what they is, have the, uh, the all metal ones as well. What now. does a $7,400 yeah. G Shock get you? If I scroll I to the bottom, will I find that? Something. Six Where were those? 6,000. Yeah. yeah. Oh, here, look, 3,000. Here's, 3, Here's a 3,000. So those are the MRGs. Wow. So that's top of the line. So again, you have GPS, they have Bluetooth, they'll connect to your phone so you can control the functions of the watches. And, uh, you know, all titanium, nitrogen hardened titanium wow. cases. Are you fire crystals? Are you a stuff. pimp with one of these things? I do not have you. I mean, I would. Yes. To me, you are a pimp. Yeah. I think some people would be like, you spent how much on a G-Shock? <laughs> yeah, I kind of feel like at, at the end of the, out of the G-Shock. At the spot. end of the day, though, that's <laughs> if that's what floats your boat. Yeah. You know, wear it and wear it loud and wear it proud. Uh, I'll be honest. You know, you know what? The only brand I, I just I won't have anything to do with is Invicta. You won't uh, yeah. on 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 it's actually principle. One, it's actually one of our rules. The really, really? The only rule with the, the only Red real Bar? rule with Red Bar is no assholes and no Invictas. And the second rule <laughs> isn't that like the same thing though? Is no Invictas. Now here's the thing: now, you why are welcome to join us. I don't own but your an watch. Has, your watch has to wait outside. I don't join. I don't own an Invicta. Why? why What's okay. wrong with an Invicta? You know what? Because they shit on everything that we hold dear about this hobby, about horology. They steal designs with impunity. Really? Uh, and when they and when right. they have an original design, I mean, yeah. Take a look at the. Uh, let, let's look up a Zeus Bolt Magnum. Reserve. Is this a real thing? It's a real thing. I'm not making these <laughs> names up. This, that's a real um, watch. This is a real okay. watch. Oh, there you go. What the fuck is that? That's a lot of watch for a lot of man. Okay, wait. Hang on. It's, it's, and nothing breaks my heart more. I mean, it's not good looking. It's not. And nothing breaks my heart more than seeing some cat who's got a box full of Invictas as his collection. And all I'm thinking is you could actually, for what you have spent, have some pretty decent watches that actually respect the art of horology now 
I mean, look, Cameron's sitting right here. He's a watchmaker. I know him from Audemars Piguet. That's when we met, when he was a watchmaker at the flagship <laughs> boutique. He's got his own company now. Here's somebody who probably should be very offended by what he's looking at there. Yeah. <laughs> I've, I've never been a fan of Invicta. I've never given them do. a thought, but you could have a case have, full of they are ugly. kind of knockoff watches where designs were uh, were taken, and you'll pay like $1,000 for an Invicta, and you I mean, could have yeah. at least a couple of the real things instead of having a whole bunch of uh, fake watches. Yeah, John basically. Ward was in here a couple weeks ago with yeah. a whole bunch yeah. of real vintage stuff that right. was that was well under a thousand bucks. Yeah, not breaking the bank at yeah. all, and you've got something that you can actually be proud of. Now, here's the thing: at the end of the day, if that's what you really love, okay, fine. But I just, I just feel like there's there's so mm. much out there you can get for the same prices. Now we're looking here, two hundred and thirty nine dollars for basically something that's attempting poorly to rip off a Submariner and maybe some other watches and. Honestly, I have no idea. Quartz. And, it, oh, look, it's almost 50 millimeters. Honestly, not one of the more horrible-looking watches. Of it's not seen. offensive, but I see but on the Internet a lot derivative. of people who just rip off the Submariner. Well, and look, the design is iconic. Some people do it better than others. Some people get a pass. Some people don't. I firmly believe by the original in anything. Yeah. Um, I just, you know, let's respect the design. Let's respect, you know, the effort that went into that. Can't keep that picture on the, the show. No, no, Sorry. Really, <laughs> what I'm saying with that watch for that price, there are a ton of great watches mm -hmm. that you can buy. You can buy a Seiko. You can buy a Citizen. You yeah. Know, that uh, that we had one an Seiko awesome, that we had on here. Was yeah. That was uh, Prospects. What was the, the dive uh, watches are yeah. awesome. And Presage, Presage, right? The other Presage one. Yeah. Series, yeah. They're, yeah. A couple they're hundred, actually, few hundred dollars. I think that was. Three hundred dollars. That was a really nice yeah. watch. Way above their weight now. Yeah. Really Seiko is my jam. And they're, and they're coming into their own, too, at the, on the higher end. Now the Grand Seiko is here. That's actually where we met for the first yeah. time. Yeah, I just went into that store yeah. the other day. They're, that store is loaded up with great shit right now. Amazing stuff. <laughs> they have some really, really nice watches in that store right you now. Know, and there was fear that, like, you know, no one's going to get this. You know, you mm. think about it. Let, let's draw a car analogy. Back in the 80s, you know, when the Japanese marks were saying, look, we want to hit the higher end. How do we? You can't sell a, a $50,000 Toyota. You can't sell a fifty thousand dollar Nissan or an Acura, so we started. They started creating these other brands. So we have Infinity, we have Lexus, we have Acura. So with Grand Seiko, the thought was, we're still calling it Seiko. Who's going to pay for this when you're thinking about fifty dollar, hundred dollar mm -hmm. cheap watches? And yet, you know what? I know from the boutique, the first bo uh, standalone boutique in America was on Madison Avenue, and it's not strictly a Grand Seiko boutique. They sell a little bit of everything, but they've been doing gangbusters. From the start, the uh, the gentleman Michael at the uh, at the LA store said mm -hmm. they were doing really really well. Yeah, um, I love my Grand Seiko so much. It's so nice. Well, you know, it's when you tank. compare it to you know the equivalent Rolex model, let's say, and that's always going to be the they did that in the store to. when I bought it. They put it under the microscope. They yeah. go, you want to you want to pull that GMT off and put it under the microscope next to this <laughs> yeah. Grand Seiko, and I was like, oh, I know where this is going. Yeah, and I bought the watch. Look, yeah, look, there's nothing wrong, obviously, with the Rolex. And again, that's money in the bank. No, but no, no, no. When you look at it's, the level of detail yeah. they put into it, it's a very uh, high level, but it's also very Japanese. I think when you look at that, we can talk about the Swiss tradition, the Japanese tradition, the German, the Glashütte tradition, yeah. and you'll start seeing certain common threads there. But with the Japanese, the level that they go to, it might not be the most ornate finishing, but everything is perfect. It's ridiculously detailed. Yeah. And actually, one of my favorite things to do with my Seiko is, is like catch the light and it reflects oh. like a really, like almost like a sundial thing yeah. on the wall. It's really wild. Yeah. Very when they cool. say mirror polish, they mean it. Yeah, they really, really yeah. mean yeah. the mirror. It's super, it's super cool. It's hard to look at a Seiko and understand that a human actually put that together because everything that they do is so flawless mm. yeah you, it's hard to see any any bit of the the handmade nature of it so but you're an you're an iwc man I came am, in here with an iwc watch and an iwc hat on <laughs> <laughs> i'll tell you i love that hat but it's also because it's black uh -huh. um I've, I've talked to some other brands and said look you know if you can make a hat in black you know <laughs> I'll wear it. Um, I know this feeling. People yeah. send me T-shirts, and I go, "Look, man, I don't care what your shirt says on it. If it fits, I'm wearing it." Yeah. But your shirt could be dope, but if it fits like garbage, it's going to the trash. Well, that's the other thing too. You know, I have to got to make sure it works <laughs> with me. But uh, I, you know, I've always been a fan of IWC. What is it about that brand? 
I think, you know, back in the day, people can say that maybe they've lost their way a little bit. And you could probably say that about a lot of brands. Although when you look at the core collection, the pieces that you really want, for the most part, are still there. But even before I knew a whole lot about watches, for some reason, I knew what IWC was. I knew it was International Watch Company. I knew what a Mark Series Pilot Watch was. It's almost like, you know, with JLC. I didn't really know much about JLC, but I knew what a Reverso was. Mm -hmm. uh, and as I got more into this, and remember, when I was coming up in the world, we didn't have the internet. You know, I actually had to go to the local Tourneau. I had to go to the, the International Magazine store where they had sort of the trade publications. Sometimes they were in Italian or French, you know, and I still would just look through, look at the pictures and figure it out. And there was something about the design that to me was very pure, very utilitarian, but you still knew you were looking at quality. And I always liked tool watches, if you will. Nothing too fancy. I'm not a dress watch guy. I'm not a uber complication guy. Although you, my most complicated watch is an IWC. But it's, it's, it's this one as well, it's right? Literally, the it's perpetual? literally what, so what you're wearing, and I'm pretty sure that looks like the Boucher Limited Edition, the, the orange loom and the, um, uh, the perpetual calendar yeah, yeah. pilot watch. So my uh, big pilot perpetual is the Top Gun version that was done in black, matte black ceramic. Which is very nice, and it's in the book A Man and His Watch. Actually, yeah. Which is right here, and that's <laughs> how I knew to wear this watch today, <laughs> because of you talking about it in the book. All right, fair I enough. I will find it. But today, you're not wearing that. You're wearing this uh, this different one. What's this one about? So this is the Collector's Forum 3 watch, and yeah, one thing people don't know about IWC is for years, they have had their own uh, online watch forum uh, for their collectors that you can go, anybody can go and join. Um, it's moderated by somebody who works closely with IWC, but not an IWC employee right now. The individual is uh, Tony, who I love. Hey, Tony. He's probably not going to watch this, but still. And <laughs> and so confidence. What, I like the confidence. Well, you know, I mean, I just he's he's in. You know, I think he's Belgian. You know, <laughs> what are they? Know? We're not big in Belgium. We're not big. Yeah, you know, yet, you not. could be yet. World yeah. domination's coming. It's but, coming, but well, not not on episode twelve. You do have to. <laughs> you do. At 14. some point, you do have to. You're going to have to reckon with Belgium because they're they're wristwatch powerhouse, um, baby. Anyway, are point they? before is I there, get, are there any Belgian watches? There are. Well, not watches. <laughs> watch collectors. Oh, watch collectors. Yeah. There's the Belgian Watch Club. Those watch guys, it. That's the most exciting thing to do in Belgium. Well, <laughs> that and uh, European Union stuff. I think they're that's there, getting exciting a, now. There was a, yeah. there was a Jeremy Clarkson series called Jeremy Clarkson Meets the Neighbors. I don't know if you ever saw I this. Have it not was seen very that. short lived. <laughs> and he basically went in, to in the Belgium. he went to the neighboring countries of the UK and he insulted them. Insulted them to their faces. <laughs> oh. And it's and the Belgian one is unfucking believable. Uh, it's yeah. on YouTube. It's worth watching. I'm gonna be honest, there's some good cats out there. It is worth there's some watching. big motherfuckers out there too. You don't wanna, <laughs> you don't wanna you know, I mean these aren't guys I'm going up Here, to I so found I got the book. So here's the, uh, for those watching the video, yeah. here's uh, Adam's big pilot, uh, Perpetual Top Gun. Yes. And so that is the watch. same movement that is in the watch you're wearing, uh, designed uh, by Kirk Klaus, who's a living legend watchmaker, former uh, technical director for IWC, and a man with a lot of firsts to his name. As a matter of fact, the watch that uh, we were just talking about, uh, the CF3, the strap that it's on, a friend of mine, Mika Dirksen, uh, Vintager Straps made that for me. And the first strap... Wait, this guy? Yeah. And oh, okay. the first strap I had signed by Kurt Klaus. And uh, it was funny. I was at SIHA. It's a big trade show. It was about maybe three years ago. And we had a dinner, and he was at that. And so, you know, he's getting older. I'm like, look, I need you to sign something. Uh, here, sign this. You know, just the back of the strap. But then I'm like, oh, shit. Now no, you can't wear this I thing. I can't wear it. Like, I painted <laughs> myself into a corner. So I had to just put it in my pocket and then I couldn't wear it for the rest of the trip. And so I, I contacted uh, Dirk, uh, Mika again and said, look, I, I need another strap. And he has this thing. He says, look, if you mess your strap up for any reason, I will replace it for free. Now, he's not giving these things away, but yeah. he said, look, as long as there's a good story this there. is This is probably... So I suspicious. said, I need a new strap. And he goes, well, well, well what happened? Because these things are tough as nails. Like, what, it break? And I go, well, actually, I had Kirk Klaus sign it, and I can't wear it now. Like, All right, I'm going to be... <laughs> I'll make you another strap. That, that kind of qualifies. I'm with you on the canvas, though. The, the canvas IWC on canvas works. And the older it gets, the softer it gets. Mm -hmm. It's nice to have something that wears in. That comes on a calf strap that you don't want to get it wet. You know? And I, I want to wear this watch. I actually wear it in the pool. I wear it 
you know, at the beach. Um, you know, you're not going to dive on the Andrea Doria with it. But yeah, yeah. You know, within reason. It Would can you wear this. your perpetual in the water? I have. I've you done. have? It's the same water resistance. For some reason, I'm, IWC. Right. I'm scared. I don't, well, it's a screw down <laughs> crown. They're rated I know it's for, a for 60 meters, um, which honestly is more than. Most of us are Yeah, most do. of it's more than anyone's going to scuba Here's dive Here's the to. thing. If I'm at 60 meters, I'm probably going to die. Yeah. Like it's, my concern at this point isn't the, the water resistance of my perpetual calendar. So. This is why people, I, I, yeah. a couple of people have asked why I don't have a sea dweller yet. And that's my answer. Is If I need the sea dweller to survive, yeah. I am almost certainly yeah, dead. Yeah, yeah. Well, and a joke. Nobody can go. Even most. No even one can go to a submarine. Yeah. With, with only a handful of submersibles. You know, the nuclear attack subs can't go that deep. <laughs> yeah. So, but anyway, to get back to that one watch, just tell this story. They they created a series of watches to kind of honor uh, their their collectors on this forum. So they had the the CF one uh, or the CF five. So that's the collectors forum ingenieur. Uh, I literally, I just had an opportunity to buy one. This was back in 2005. They only made 100. You had to have your name put on the back, and it had an Ardois dial. Now, for IWC, Ardois, which is metallic gray, traditionally only goes for uh, the precious metal pieces. So this is the first time they were put it in a steel watch, and uh, I was not part of this form at the time, so I didn't get in on that action. Just had a chance to buy one. Uh, could not get the money together in time because... I have children, I live in Manhattan, and I'm not a millionaire. So that dream is going to be pushed aside. But that was their first watch. The next watch they did was uh, a Da Vinci chronograph. Not the most popular watch in their collection. It had a display back, so you couldn't really engrave anything on the back of it. The third watch, so we had, they had done... Um, an ingenieur. Still not cheap, by the way. The not Da Vinci cheap. chronograph no. is still... Uh... Well, it looked very different. These are the new ones. Oh, These this came is, oh, out last year. That's what I get for trying to Google shit fast. Womp womp. Do a, Google um, uh, right. Da Vinci Kurt Club. Oh, there you go. Where? Right, here? Right there. It's the, the tonneau. Go left. Oh. There. No, back. There you go. This? Oh, this is it. That's oh. it. So it's a very unique look. It's a tonneau uh, style case. So, you know, you see those, you know, Frank Mueller's, like that type of stuff. And... Uh, I've got, I know people who just live for that. I know people who think it's hideous. No, people have an opinion. Yeah, but it's it not bad. It's, it's interesting. It's not. It does not say IWC to me. Yeah. Well, the Da Vinci's always been occupied. I think a strange place in the collection. Do you um, kind of when you're collecting watches? Do you want to start at least? I mean, look, if you're rocking a hundred pieces, get everything. But yeah. if you're talking about a reasonable collection of sub ten pieces, if that could be considered reasonable, that is. Do you, do you want to get us. for us right for yeah. every, everything's relative but everything's like for relative. us yeah, you know for 10 us. pieces could be $200,000 you know uh, but like you know the do you want to get the staples of each brand do you want to get a, a watch that represents I, I, yeah, that I'm brand yeah i'm going to say that initially you want versatility you want a watch that you can kind of wear in a bunch of situations you know that sort of boardroom to beach idea mm -hmm. where you're not going to look weird with jeans and a t-shirt but you could put a suit on you can go to the office uh there are a bunch again a bunch of seikos that that fit that bill uh -huh. and if you want to spend a little more look there are a bunch of iwcs or a bunch of brand, omegas bunch of rolexes every that all brand work has in it. That. yeah and i think you just have to find where you're comfortable the one thing i would always say to any collector uh new or experienced and the experienced ones know this don't go into Hawk over a watch. <laughs> oh, my God. I hate God. to say, if you don't put it on credit, whatever you buy, just know that you can pay for that watch up front. And if you can't, wait and save up. Or maybe if there's something else, that because you need it right now. Yeah. But don't fall into that trap. Yeah, I see on Tomorrow's Instagram a lot of uh, ads for watch financing. Don't do that. No, no, just don't <laughs> do that. <laughs> don't, 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 just, Please don't. Just, and don't. also because there's so many great watches that you can get at great prices. And the micro brands are huge now. A lot of stuff coming up on Kickstarter. Look, a lot of it's is junk. It? Uh, yeah. A lot of it, but, a, but some a of it's actually what pretty it, cool. What do you got? What, got what that, did you... Marco rep. brought a bunch of watches, <laughs> and I think we should yeah, probably start went, looking at some of yeah. them. I went home before I came here. <laughs> you see, I'm so. traveling with my children. I understand. I, so I'm, I, I'm old. Nope, I other case. stuff. Well, so. I, before you leave, we have to talk about that, because well, that's brand new and cool. there's a story with this guy, yeah. But Marco has got like all this stuff. Is there Look something that's yes. what's your what so is your the, Kickstarter watch? The Kickstarter is that Rec Watches with what's the Rec Watches. It's, they make it out of an old Porsche. 
Oh yeah, I've heard of these. What? Guys. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. so, but here it's an already, actual old Porsche. They take so like this. That's in your wheelhouse. Yeah, yeah. Well, because yeah. of what How it was, right? for I, you. I bought two of them. One for me, yes. one for my dad. Yeah. Right. Okay. My dad passed away before he got it, so I gave it to my mom. And she gave it back, so now I got two of them. <laughs> there you go. Thanks, um, But I mean, it's a Miata Sorry, movement, but it's got power reserve, day, date, month. That's kind of cool. It's it's not a piece of shit. It's a good watch. I, also, I wore it for a month straight. Oh, it's I'm got also going to go out and I'm say kind of Miyota. offended by the Fuchs back. Don't, it's a look, little on look, the nose. Look, look, well, that's what the whole point mean, was, right? That's and the drilled rotor. <laughs> it's on the back, yeah. though. It's They're not shoving it it's in your face. It's not too ostentatious. So it's a nice detail. But, you know, also... When you say a Miyota movement, I don't think that needs to be qualified. I think they make great stuff at a but good price They definitely point. do. Yeah. Again, people look at that and yeah. they go, oh, it's a Miyota movement. But Fair I enough. think yeah. it's a quality piece. And, you know, the orange the orange sweep second. I mean, it's a pretty I, cool you know, It's not bad. I've seen photos on live. This is the first time I've seen one live. It's actually really. So how much was that? It's kind uh, of I want to say a thousand bucks. Something like that. Not no. bad. No. Not bad at all. But you're getting something that's unique. You don't see yourself coming and going. Maybe, where are they maybe made? Maybe that's the direction uh, that people want. Where are they made? Made here? No, America? no, they're no. made in like Belgium. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> Wait a second. We were just joking about Belgium. <laughs> <laughs> Ressance. Something like that. Yeah. Ressance, the psycho. Oh, Ressance, Ressance. is, they're so, Belgian? So they're ateliers in Switzerland, but uh, Benoit best. Mitians, who founded the company, designs the watches, is based in Antwerp. Oh. And so, so there is a huge Belgian connection. I mean, they're not those are making great. them there, but that guy. Have you played really with those watches to... in person? Are they as incredible? We actually, we, actually, uh, we visited uh, his atelier in um, Antwerp. It's so the and photographs the of them and are just to, so crazy. Well, the E-Crown, I got to play with it at SIHH, and that's crazy. And, you know, it's so hard to reinvent the wheel in this industry you know a watch traditionally is going to be round or whatever it's going to fit on your wrist it's going to have three hands it's got to tell the time and now you've got the guys like mbnf you know oh, work, yeah with the, yeah. With the know, nuclear goo and, 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 <laughs> and, and, and whatever they're doing that's, and i think it's height hey, watches yeah. No, yeah. it's it's high horology <laughs> oh, yeah, it's yeah. art you know and they're really pushing the boundaries and maybe legibility is not 110 percent what it's about they still tell time yeah but these guys found a way to tell time in an incredibly unique way that is still almost instantly intuitive and legible. Yeah. I wish That's they were key. more uh, affordable. Yeah. Because I would have one. The dive watch, the Type 5 is incredible. The Type 3 is filled with oil. So, is this the type three? The, that's which the is type the, that's three. a type five. This the is type, type five. five. Is that's also filled with oil. Which one is three? The three go down yeah. oh, to the right, to the right. There you go. This one? That's a type three. Okay, here's a type three. The yeah. oil thing is crazy because it makes it just look like there is it's no. Just, it's literally looks like it's right printed on the glass. Yeah, yeah. it's so And so cool. there's a magnet underneath it. Those of us so familiar with glass connected. blowing, it looks yeah. like inside it's, out it's glass. It's just, uh, <laughs> just oil between the So he's the familiar. Dial. Yeah, no, so I'm I know, very familiar I know a few blowing. things about blown glass. Do you really? Yeah. yeah, I was a customer for a very, very long <laughs> time. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know anything about blowing glass, I'll be honest with you. Uh, but no, but so they, there's somebody who really just sort of went, you know, out of their way to, to try to come up with something new. And, you know, the base of these are ETA movements. So these are not, you know, like he's oh, crazy out of, out of nowhere. Oh, that's, that's he's using Ada? 2824s. Oh, I don't know no if he's way. using another um, E-Bosch also, but, you know. Well, but in the recent, in the Ressence, re the yeah. whole face moves and then the dials, yes. like the teacup ride. Yes, exactly. That's a great way to describe yeah, it. Yeah, it's the teacup, right? I'm actually bringing my kids to Disneyland tomorrow. Are you? And if I, God forbid, Lola... Dude, get it above, get that. like a time lapse of the yeah, teacup I'm ride and then a time you. lapse of the I'm watch. Yeah. Yeah. That'd be a pretty but awesome. Actually, this, this wreck <laughs> thing, I think the logo cheapens it. The rest of it looks great, what, but the, the logo, the REC, REC looks cheap. Well, it's supposed to be recycled, you know? That's the whole point. That's <laughs> Is it? So it's a recycle. What is that, our VIN number? You stamp it something. Yeah. Wait, what? Flip it on its side. There you go. Got a little the VIN, VIN black there. The car, for oh, the wait, hang on. I have to zoom guts, in on the man. camera here. Oh, wow. It's, uh, Is that clear? Or? It's not really. Yeah. Well, oh, yeah, trust there us. we go. You can Hello. see it now. Yeah. There's a VIN number it. there. Yeah. Is that from the car that That's it came out of? from the car that they used the metal from. Oh, have you run a Carfax on it yet? No. <laughs> <laughs> and you it's really not my problem. Oh, man. It was a right of flood. Well, you know, but you know, you bring up something kind of interesting in terms of the logo, though. A lot of brands, it's one area that they. They don't really think about it. The logo is important, and and the and the font. If you, you spell it important. out, this cat actually, you did a good job there. Yeah, Weiss yeah. watches look Weiss. beautiful. Yeah. Let's now examine his name on it. I think it's been a long time. But you know what? It's not. That's not. It uh -oh. seems so simple. 
but it You're is right. not. Cameron's watch, his font is awesome. But you see that? Oh, he's wearing yeah. a white one today. Yeah. See that? Finally. That's your every that's but his you every day or is that the white if you use no? a slightly different font, that can ruin the whole damn watch. Yeah. So who does it? IWC does it well. Here's I'm gonna IWC grab your Bell. Really Bell well, I love yeah. Bell and Ross's yeah. font. Bell and Ross. They do, that's a, and it's has a, a really nice. It becomes font iconic. Here. It's your calling card. So yeah. you have to be very. Uh, you know, there's so many details. There's so many little things that go into designing a watch. Everybody can sort of armchair quarterback this, and you know the internet amplifies everyone's voice. But yeah, you know, at the end of the day, you know the people who get it right deserve some, you know, deserve some credit. Bell and Ross. Yeah, uh, we're looking at their Square Watch right yeah. now. It looks, what's it called? The, the Square Watch. Series. Instrument series. Yeah. Looks exactly BR, like a helicopter it's instrument. It's a BR ninety one. Yeah, ninety one. Is that what that is? I think it is? Okay, I can't remember. It's and uh, BR yeah, ninety three. It says ninety two uh, on 03-92. it. Oh three dash nine two. Uh, okay. R O three nine two. Yeah. So that's probably the two eight nine two. I was going to say uh, yeah, Edda movement in there. Twenty eight ninety two in there. Yeah. And yeah, and they're not hiding the fact they're using Edda's, uh, but they kind of you know created font, this look. Yeah. But a lot of people instantly have, recognizable. And a right? lot of people have have comp, you know copied it. Um, I'm sure there are plenty of Invictas that look like that. Yeah. <laughs> but at the end of the day, give them credit. Now, if it's not your cup of tea, it's not your cup of tea. But for the cat who gets it, these either look perfect on you or super dumb. Well, you well, know, there's what? almost Square nothing in between. Larger, though. So I what is that? That, one is a, that one's a 42. Where's the like 46? A, I was, uh, huge. I was like the do like not unscrew. Do not screw. unscrew. Exactly. <laughs> do not unscrew. What yeah. happens if you unscrew it? Uh, you'll out. pop Cameron, the. Uh, go for yeah, it. I was going to say, Cameron. You're going right to pop here. the stem out. Oh, seriously? Yeah. So why okay. would you design a watch like that? Why put a screw there at all? Yeah. You know. I, so I've seen another right design this like this recently, and I don't understand it. Through there, just to yeah. Do. So there's something called a two-piece crown, and it was used a lot in old watches. The Royal Oak, yeah, two-piece crown originally, the the thin one, right? Because the crown, you have to reach the back of the movement to hit a little release, so you can pull the stem out, so you can take the movement out of the case. Okay. So if you do not have a case back that comes off, uh. and the movement goes in through the front of the watch, all right, you can't. Take the stem out, but they're still unless assholes. you have that screw there. <laughs> yeah. Oh, they're still. Now the alternative <laughs> is something move. that's been around a long time. It was actually a two-piece stem that snaps together, so you have enough pounds of force to pull it, and it'll unsnap, and then it'll snap back together, rather than having another place to leak in the back of a watch. So I was always confused okay. as to why they designed it that way, as opposed to putting the the two-piece stem. I feel I like know. because helicopters have right? writing on them that say what not to do. Exactly. Don't and I, step, I like the, don't, you know, don't whatever. Yeah. Yeah. I like the instruction and the screw stepping. there, but yeah, it maybe. seems like a, a weak water point. Oh, my God. It seems like the fucking I apple of <laughs> the Garden of Eden. Eden. Like, I've, I've never heard of one leaking there. but uh, tempting. Right? I, that's, that's what I'm exactly. talking about. All I want to yeah, do is do not press. Like, all I'm, now yeah. I'm just like looking at your screwdrivers Boom. over there. Like right? I'm like eyeing Bell and Ross <laughs> screwdriver. Not my watch. Bell and Ross go, screwdriver. Go, right? Bell and Ross screwdriver set. Yeah, of course they do. <laughs> Sell it with their watch. So I don't know. I think God, it's important to buy what you like, man. Yeah. Yes. Let's see. What can we tell about Marco by his watches? He's an asshole. We've got it. No, I don't <laughs> think so. I can tell that by your face. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> door was open. It's it's getting, getting the door chill. was open. We my do friend. look alike. It's getting chilly in here. Now look, this is so interestingly. That was a watch I was wearing recently. And is that the Omega? It's the Omega. That's the it's one I don't Seamaster wear anymore. Deville. Like they got the new one now. Well, nope. so well, yeah, as a matter of fact, yeah, at Basel World, they uh, they introduced a kind of an homage, if you will. But uh, that was a very popular uh, watch in the era. It was almost, I think, from the fifties to the seventies that mm -hmm. this thing was coming out. The the two that I have, one belonged to my grandfather. One belonged to my father, gold case, and that was around 1972 when I was born that they date from. They still run perfectly. And I can pretty much say with 100% certainty they've never been serviced. Um, In how long? They're some of the greatest oh, movements years. that Omega really? ever made. Yeah, it's yeah. crazy. Uh, they are they're, they're locomotives, <laughs> basically. Yep. And, and they keep decent time. And I'm not putting it on a timing machine. I don't, you know, it's not something I really care about. When but you have 100 watches, you wear them for like six hours at a time. <laughs> I, I have switched multiple times in a day. I'm not, I'm not ashamed Jennifer Lopez. <laughs> but okay. I'll tell you, that's a watch, vintage-wise, that you can buy for $1,000, $850, and so here's another example. I think John Ward has about 30 of them on eBay, Probably right? Probably Pelican like, full. He, bu going, he bought a whole case he's going of watches. To, well, What's he said he bought a whole mind? collection to get one. Yeah. And so he was selling the rest. 
There were some nice uh, <laughs> That's old sick. We so, had some nice <laughs> GP Seahawks. Yeah. In there. Here's the, I was uh, tempted. Here's again, the uh, the new one from Basil World. Yeah. Which looks very nice. I think it's beautiful. Yeah. Uh, is it small? Is it small like that one, or is it the same size? It's got to be a little bit bigger. About Forty, maybe thirty-eight. Yeah. It certainly is. This is about thirty-five, I think. So the new one definitely looks. You know, keeps a lot of what makes the old one work. Although yeah. it adds a, a subdial. So it was the it was the Seamaster Deville that mine, and so the Deville part, you know, the town. So you're supposed to have a watch that had some water resistance. You know, and that was a big thing in the '50s and the '60s. That was after uh, it was with Rolex Le Monde, and Le Monde du Silence, and uh, yeah, Jacques Cousteau. Mm -hmm. uh, so diving was big. So you had the the Submariner came out, the Blancpain 50 Fathoms came out, and then a whole bunch of divers came out. Um, you know, Omega was doing the Plo Prof for a while there, which is probably one of the first crazy purpose built tanks of a watch. It's Those not something, not something you're wearing to the opera though. No, no. and not uh, real versatile. Yeah. So these watches <laughs> Monsters, were supposed really. to, you know, tie into that, uh, sea master, that ocean mystique, but again, Deville of the town that you could yeah. just wear them 24 seven. So that was their idea of a versatile Every day, whatever circumstance, watch to wear. That works. And in steel, they look fantastic. Otherwise, you want steel or gold. They do have gold plated That's a gold, ones, gold, that's a gold one, yeah. yeah. No, it's you, not real gold. Oh, it's gold plated? Yeah. Oh, there yeah, you go. Look stainless at back. And now look, mm -hmm. is, is that go. the hippogriff on the back there? The the, the horse. The horse, yeah. yeah. Yep. See? And so, that again, it's tying into that, that sea master, you know, the ocean. But, again, this isn't something you're wreck diving on the Andrea Doria with. No. no. Why not? No. <laughs> no, that, that one. I Who that says I can't like go into uh, Andrea you Doria? Can, but you can wear them. Yeah, it's I've like the old Rolexes daily for yeah. years and years until I hit it in the doorway. I have a friend who actually off. dives yeah. dives with a roll with a Submariner from the '60s. I'm like, I don't know what you're doing. He's like, it's I, Cameron. It's I like, dive with like the 5512. Oh yeah, you do. 67. Yeah, as long as you maintain it, keep your seals. I know a good guy who does watches. <laughs> yeah, I know some. I know a few people. Yeah. Yeah. What uh, right what, this, what what represents you the best, Marco, in this collection? Oh man, what's, what's the? We had I don't know. Everything, and you guys, you gotta walk know. out of here. They've all got, a, we've got story. Let's, Yeah, let's get this Accutron. <clears throat> I think That's this is Cameron loves our story. loves the Accutrons. Yeah. It's kind of like a stopgap between you know Great. eras. We talked and about this, Accutrons on our uh, movements episode. We right, and that, this weird... Uh, that one's, this one's sweet. Like Fresh. asymmetrical uh, case lugs well, and everything up here? the design. I mean, those were meant to be, uh, you know, like uh, demo watches. Yeah. Just so that, you know, you, they'd go to the jeweler, and then when you're trying to explain why this watch is cool, you can show people, and you can, you know, demonstrate it. And it was so popular, the pe they were like, look, sell us the watch like this. We don't want a dial on it. We want to see what's in there. Yeah. Remind and that's why us the how, the, how these work. So this one is one of the actual true Bulova Accutrons. There was a lot of other Accutron watches that came out that weren't the same with the tuning fork. Um, but you can actually see the tuning fork, the big coils up there. So there's a whole fork that comes down underneath that. And there's a wheel with, I think it's like 360 teeth or something. The tiny little wheel. The wheel must be maybe four, depending on which model you have, like between four and six millimeters with 360 teeth on it. You can't even see the teeth without uh, looking under a microscope. But you have these teeth, and then you have these oscillating jewels that are going back and forth. Um, if you think of like uh, kind of like a grasshopper type uh, movement, these jewels are going back and forth and actually pushing the, uh, the teeth. There you go. Yeah, so here you've got your magnet which will create this oscillation. You can't see too much back here, but you've got your quartz in here. Here, use the, here. you take the mouse. Okay. You use the mouse. That way people can yes. actually see what you're pointing at who are watching the video. So you got, Cameron has the con. Yeah, so yes. you've got your coils up here. <laughs> oh, no, and which my, are, <laughs> my instant messages from Lee Keener are coming <laughs> up on the screen. Sorry. <laughs> so up here you've got the coils, which are inside the ends of the tuning fork. So... Down here is going to be the other side of the tuning fork, and these are going to be going back and forth, getting closer and further apart from each other to create this action, which will then move these two little jewels that push this wheel forward. And it's just a humming sound, basically. So if you ever find one of these, you want to actually flick the crystal and yeah, see smart. if it will move. If it starts moving, because all you're doing, like, just like the doctor bangs the, the tuning fork on your knee and listens yeah. to it hum. So 
that's all you're doing. You're flicking the crystal and it'll get it moving. If it moves, you're good. If it does not move, don't buy it. It will cost way too much money to fix if you can even fix it. If you can, yeah, that's yeah. Oh, so if it, if, it, if it breaks, totaled. Is that Exi- one moving? Yeah. If, if, you, if you put that up, he's like, wait, it's moving. No, this one's running. One 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 hundred percent, dude. Hundred yeah. percent. If you put that next to your ear, you can hear it hum. Oh, you can hear the hum, right? And you see how smooth that sweeps. Super. It's like a it's like a spring drive sweep. The problem is if you leave it on. It's actually like that. These because these are electric. If you leave it on the nightstand, you can hear it hum through the nightstand. Probably exactly. Kind of annoying, yeah, it's that's why super, I don't wear super, it much anymore. Super Fair cool watch. Yeah, Fair and that's cool. all instead of having your your typical quartz. I think yeah, after we fork, after we did that movement show, I had more tweets and shit about Accutron stuff than anything else. Yeah, people it's a, love it's people a who are into this. Are like way the space into views. it. Great These are the yeah. space views, which yeah. are pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. 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 What yeah, else? Wait, while we, Marco was picking up. What did no, you this pick up one, This? What yeah. is this? Well, that's that's a Kinsel. What's a Kinsel? A I don't know how you, how you say it, but anyway. It sounds like something I would make for Passover. Well, what is what? It? <laughs> Could be. Baruka. Um Well, the, what's cool about that, and the reason I picked it, is because they were the supplier to Porsche for dash clocks. Yeah, I just oh. read the word Inca block somewhere else. What is that from? Well, Inca block, Inca block is the the shock, shock absorber on the balance. Oh yeah, yeah, you were talking yeah. about that, right? right. Yeah, but yeah. you know that's got your Valjoux seventy seven thirty four movement, which is like during the seventies the movement that everyone yeah. used. But what was cool is because I've never seen get your mic uh, closer. There you yeah. go. What I've never seen is anyone yeah. uh, with a keen slow watch before. So being a Porsche mechanic, I figured there's the connection, and I put it on a really crappy strap, which was a huge mistake. But um, I wore it. Pretty regularly until I put the strap on it. And then Where did you find it? I found it on Chrono Twenty Four, oh. and it was under a grand. Wow! Which was the and have it you came seen one of these before, Europe. Adam? I have not, uh, but that case design, that movement, you know, it's all part of an era. You know, and at, at the time too, a lot of brands, and you know, we see this today too. Now there's a stigma, whereas back then there really wasn't. Where you were getting your case from one person, the dial was being made by someone else. You're buying your movement from here, and then you're kind of putting it all together, and you put your name on it. So there are probably a bunch of other brands that are going to be using the same case, mm-hmm. uh, very similar dial. They sort of mix, it, just mix and match stuff. Yeah. But the quality, there we go. Yeah. And the, I got one the, right next to it. The one right next to it. But the quality is there. Is this the, and again, oh. it's an example of <laughs> yeah, being able to buy realize. something. Yeah, look yeah. exactly the well, same. So that's Jorgensen. So same what, movement. Yeah, so that's right, what yeah, I'm yeah. saying. And look at the case. Yeah. Yep. You know? Very similar. But so, and, but again, a perfect example of being able to, to buy something really cool that's got some history, you know, and, and you're not cheap. breaking the bank. Yeah. I mean, and, it, you know, it's it's not an, an Invicta. <laughs> it's not. It's all, <laughs> at the well, end of guys, the day, yeah. that's what we have. Did you guys, this here. before you came on the show, you were like, you're like, we're, we're going we're gonna to shit on Invicta, we're right? This is what we're going to go. <laughs> we're gonna go on the I'm, just, show. I'm just following his lead. We're just, I, uh, you know, just you guys had a, you guys had an agenda, man. Both sides. His Both agenda. sides. So, I mean, OK. So if you really want to know about this collection that I started or whatever, it all started with um, with Gerald Genta. Like all I right. wanted to collect all the Genta watches. Then I realized I couldn't afford to collect all the Genta watches because, you know, the what are all the Gerald Oak. Oak. What are all the Gerald Genta watches for us amateurs in the room? So the, the big ones are the IWC Ingenieur, the Patek Philippe Nautilus. Okay. The AP Royal Oak. Oh, this is like the... Yeah, okay. Yeah. I got that, you. They the all the guy who right. the big ones. And they all have that and similar was the, octagonal look. The overseas? Vacheron overseas? That no. was a different designer, but it was from that era. Yeah, correct. You know, when AP came out with the Royal Oak, this was, a again, a groundbreaking watch. But it wasn't an instant success. But here you had a luxury watch made out of steel, not a noble material. And the irony being that... While steel is, is not as expensive, it was much more difficult to work with and to have it finished to the level that AP you know needed to have it at. And then they're selling this watch for like three thousand dollars at the nineteen seventy two. You could buy ten Rolex Submariners for that, you know. So it took a couple of years to is sell. Is it really the first ten thousand. times the cost of a Submariner so when it was? Submariner at the time is about three four hundred bucks. And now it's in steel twice the cost of a Submariner. Uh, Royal Oak, not a, even fifty percent. Now it's, it's a little more than well. I mean, vintage. Yeah, it should be around twenty one if you buy one new. A brand yeah, new, a for brand the, new for the actual Jumbo Royal Oak. Okay, yeah, the yeah. in steel. Like, I think they're up yeah. to actually. They think they're kissing twenty five. Really, Th- twenty five thousand yeah. for the forty ones. Okay. Yeah, the thirty nine. No, the thirty nine. No, the thirty nines are up well, the that 39 high. Is more, yeah. It's always been more expensive. Oh. That's the fifteen two hundred two. So that's yeah. like the original. Right. It's got the uh, the JLC designed uh, movement in it. But so when they came out with that watch, when it finally took off, this was the thing. So then Patek Philippe needed something to compete, and that's where the Nautilus came from, which was also designed 
by Genta, and that was, I think, 76. Maybe. I don't know. I'm looking at the That Washington one I don't computer. know. Okay, so there we that go. We're going gonna to go with 1976. <laughs> sure, 76. Sure, yeah. 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 But Sounds then great. we also had the Laureato from um, uh, Gerard Perigoda that was not designed by Genta, but How again. Can you spell that one? Laureato? Yeah. L A U R E A T O. Okay. There you go. Sorry. And trying so, to be efficient. So that came out in 75. That actually beat oh, really? the, um, the, whatchamacallit, the Nautilus. And then we have the Ingenieur SL. At the time, I would out, call right? this a flagrant ripoff of the Royal Oak. Well, if they sold yeah. The I think, thing. but yeah. I, I, honestly, though, it, they've been around long enough. I have a lot of respect for GP. I would love to own uh, an original. And the originals were quartz. Oh, really? 75, hmm. they were quartz. And Gerard Perigo actually created... Uh, the uh, the quartz movement at the beat rate, the hertz that we use today. Oh, so they're they're sort of the, the godfathers of the modern quartz movement. Interesting. So again, I don't throw you know shade you know cast shade on them because they were using quartz back then. Uh, but so a lot of watches were going for the steel, these blocky cases, integrated bracelets. Um, but he was designing watches way before that. Yep. You know, there was the the Universal Genève pole routers. Mm-hmm. Um, the original Omega Pi Pan constellations were also Genta. He so. always had that that look though with the like the Pi Pan and then yeah. the Royal Oak it had had that kind of octagonal. He would always throw a little shape. something in there. Yeah. Now these watches you can get still for around a thousand bucks or so. The prices are going up on them, but a Universal Genève Pole Router is a fantastic watch. They're a little smaller, uh, probably Everything about thirty five. Everything is small. Well, yeah, it's, unfortunate. <laughs> it's unfortunate. We were smaller back then. I actually was looking at a an, an a basic AP Royal Oak from Crown and Caliber. Yeah. Used, they're I think kind of reasonable and they're great yeah. looking. They don't have a single one that fits my wrist. I got an eight inch wrist. I'm fucked. They got nothing. But remember though, they wear larger. The wrist, the, the wrist, the, design. Uh, the oh, actual the bracelet. diameter yeah, yeah, of the bracelet, bracelet. Yeah. 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 There we go. Now, I, now I see where we're. Oh, going. can you buy? You can you buy extra links for those? Yeah, yes. they won't can. be cheap. Ask, ask, it, oh, you can. Yeah, Cameron you can get knows. extra links. Oh, you can. Those links are very special yeah. for that watch. Fuck. They're how, how very yeah. special for my one and a half link. For I don't want to know what. I would say it could be a thousand dollars or twelve hundred for a link for one. Possibly, yeah. I, didn't pay that much. <laughs> I think I might have known a guy or something. But yeah, they, they don't Remember yeah, last They're show when I found out how much the original strap for this didn't come with the original strap? Oh, God. And it, it's, I found out it was $700 for a piece of leather, and I was like, oh, come on. Well, yeah. and now you're telling me you're it's 1000 bucks for one link. I didn't buy it. I'm not <laughs> buying it. The no way. Too, and then see how much it costs. Oh, yeah. yeah. No, no. I'm so very so happy with my canvas. I'm buckles. sticking with my canvas. For that amount of money, I get yeah. four other straps. But $1,000 a link? Oh, it, it might be like $600. And <laughs> just, still, $600 yeah. dollars for a link? Not, for a link. <laughs> yeah. That's two G-Shocks. That could be six G-Shocks. Or possibly one-sixth of a G-Shock. You've got multiple. <laughs> parts that have been hand finished and it's it's an well, intense know, process to make those links. 35% of the yeah. cost of every AP uh, is the finishing. I know, yeah. I know, I know. I mean, yeah. You I, sell a whole watch for like less than four times what these like can you, I you, tr- I guess you could buy a watch and then if find I had out an, find if, somebody who has a smaller wrist and you had take an their AP extra links. And a small That's wrist, true. could they give you four links for one of your sell watches? Them back. <laughs> it could. But let's, you know, Put the, yeah. put the call out. Do I have to buy all the links with my watch? <laughs> I don't know, but while you guys, I'm gonna look on eBay. <laughs> or was that? Yeah. Let's see what we can. Let's see what we can find here. Uh, all those, what do you think? Now you're dying to know link. how much the links cost. I want to know what you can get a link for. Well, let's just see if this is even used. I'd say you're looking at at least three or four hundred dollars. Stainless on eBay steel or yeah, link. Here we go, link. Where? Oh, 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 you're not even gonna. Oh, it does. Nope, nothing on Nobody's eBay right now. Got one. Whole wow. watches only. Currently right? sold out. Wah, wah, currently <laughs> sold out. Wah, wah, uh, it's going to be a thousand if you can get it. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's like uh, even on the the rubber strap. You've got the two elements here that attach to the case. Oh, yeah. put, so, put that on the other side with that. Since we're talking about Royal yeah. Oaks, and you yeah, brought the new that. the new hotness. That's well, that's actually old hotness. It's old. They yeah, this they, is. Uh, they stopped making the forged carbon. So that, uh, that's when very did, nice. When did the steel diver come out? What year was that? The steel diver, twenty ten. So they had the scuba, and then they went the to the diver. Yeah. Um, I don't know exactly when the diver came out, but it it was only available in steel, and then yeah. they came out with the forged carbon with the ceramic bezel, 
and yeah. this was only in production for a pretty short period of time. I get like a year so, and a half. Oh, yeah. really? So yeah. super rare. Yeah. Well, you know, and there were a couple of issues. You know, when they first started using Forge Carbon, that was, I think, with uh, the Alingi limited edition, and that was around 2000 and I want to say 2007, but you can't hold me in any of this. I don't really remember. And they were still figuring out the material. Now, it was used in the automotive industry. It was used in Lamborghinis. So it's forged carbon. It's not just straight carbon fiber. And uh, there was a special way to make it. So the original ones, the cases would kind of start to flake after a while. Now, they didn't lose any integrity, but they looked like ass. So they had to go and replace the cases. And by the time this watch came out, they had it down pat. Now, this watch has been worn in anger for years. It basically looks brand new. Are there like going to be like flaked error case APs out no. there in 20 years? No, no, are, no, 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 no. There's literally no spider dials. That. No, people, like I had a spider dial. Yeah, I had a spider back. dial Rolex that was worth like I loot. That, that, honestly, I feel like that's unique to Rolex. Of AP, course it it's is. like, no, this looks like shit. Fix it. <laughs> yeah. And, Only Rolex yeah. gets error dial points. <laughs> Pretty much. The only Porsche would get away with that oh, shit, yeah, too. Porsche might only get away Porsche with would that. be like, super ugly, heinous paint to sample that some guy with yeah. three brain cells left, you know, and there are only three of the them. factory. Yeah, because like nobody's brave enough to order something that heinous. And oh, it's half really yeah. 40 years later, it's worth yeah. something. But now the problem, though, here, so even now it works. It's great. It's, it's fantastic. But it was so fucking expensive. So the at the time, the steel diver on a strap I think it was about $17,000, which is, you know, a buttload of fucking money. Yeah. The list price on this guy when it came out was $27,100. Oh. So now... As and the only difference is carbon. Is the case and a ceramic and bezel. And a ceramic bezel. So, and it's titanium uh, for the case bag instead of steel. So, but does that, is that a $10,000 premium? Now, so the upsell as the jeweler or the boutique sales member who's trying to sell you this watch... That's pretty hard because it feels like plastic. Yeah. The watch weighs nothing. So it's it's an idiot like me who's going to come in here. And I thought the watch was ass too. And I still Can remember. I like that is, Cameron? And here's why I brought this watch with me. Uh, oh, it's first of all, I like that, traveling. It's not that light. It. Light enough. It's not that light. Here, hold if you that. Compare it to you a haven't helped the version, steel one. Oh, wow. Yeah. The steel version on a bracelet actually weighs more than a deep sea sea dweller. Well, I, got, I had the rubber bezel one as a yeah. loaner from Crown and Caliber for yeah. a while, and it was a little heavier than this, but I expected this to be like featherweight. Oh, just pick it up. Like when you like when you pick up like one of those Grand Seiko snowflakes, and it's like yeah. whoa, it's like it's like well, air. It's titanium. It's titanium. You're yeah. expecting. I was expecting Look, this to be that. substance. It feels like it. something. Yeah, 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 yeah. and it's an automatic with a solid gold oscillating weight, so the movement's got some weight to it. Oh, yeah, it's just, yeah. You know, again, sapphire, crystal, all that stuff. But it was, uh, it was definitely a big upsell. And then what happened, too, is that other companies started creating carbon fiber cases themselves. Now, it was always a different process. It wasn't exactly the same. But when you can go out and buy a carbon fiber case watch and spend $2,000, all of a sudden it gets a little harder to justify this. Now, again, for me... I'm an idiot, so and I'm into this shit. And I still remember I came in. I think it was, you know, I had a problem with the bracelet on my uh, AP Jumbo, and you helped me with that. And I think I was coming in to pick it up, and that's yeah. when you had got the. Uh, you had also gotten rent. water in the Jumbo, okay, right? That too. <laughs> that was, yeah, that was. Oh, not you remember fun. that? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I went swimming with. It. Well, it's 50 yeah. meters. You know, it, was, it was supposed to handle it. I just had it serviced. Got to yeah. put the crown back in. Um, no, the crown was in. It was. The point being, and they took care of it. He yep. took care of me like a champ. And I think I was either dropping it off or picking it up. And then he was, and I was wearing my steel diver. And he's like, "Oh, take a look. We've got, you know, the forged carbon in." And when I checked it out, yeah, that was that was it. And then I had to sell my diver, and I had it on the bracelet too. The bracelet was like two thousand, three thousand dollars, yeah, just Ooh. to get that that fucker on there. And it weighed, <laughs> it literally weighed like a pound. I mean, it was crazy. It's good for diving. You need the weight. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can, you can you remove a little up, from the weight. Good, yeah, you, go, yeah. you know, I wear like sixteen Float pounds on a belt when I dive. So oh, yeah, totally. I so, just I just grabbed this off of Marco's. Uh, this is well, the now there's some weight on that sucker. The, yeah, yeah. for comparison. And then I realized when I pulled this up, we were talking about the relationship between cars and watches last yeah. week, and I noted that my Mercedes loaner yeah. had this dial, and uh, although it doesn't have a movement, it's powered just by the yeah, car. It's electric. Because you've got a fucking car. People are like, 
this bullshit, it's not manual. I'm like, you have an engine. Like, you got a whole bunch of batteries. Yeah, and Like, the, why would you then have to... Wa- imagine AMG customers. In the so your... I'm sorry, you want me to do what? Yeah, <laughs> you bring your car in for service. Yeah, the, the clock stopped. But they... Yeah. <laughs> but they, they... There's that. And then look at this. The dial. I should just yeah. put it under the thing. We should. We can go back and forth. So here's... Mercedes AMG clock, and then here's the actual with the IWC yeah. co brand. And we see on here That's where right. that dial design came from the IWC Ingenieur, well, which is heavy as hell and well, really so nice. And I want that's one. That's where their relationship <laughs> actually started. So the watch that this is sort of based off of was the reference 3227, which was sort of the resurrected Ingenieur that was introduced in 2005. And they had two versions. So you can see right there, the IWC Ingenieur AMG version. Oh, wait, where's AMG? So go back. Yeah, right down the bottom. Mm. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Up, nope, up, right, right, down. There you go. This is the AMG one? That's, I believe that's the AMG one. Mm. Yeah. It doesn't and, say AMG well, on it. Well, you got to look on the case back. Oh, is the silver... Okay. Silver arrow or something like that. Silver nope. pill, something. No, that's silver, a different. The that's silver pill. No, silver <laughs> pill. This is what P-F- they gave the jewels. I don't know. I can't. Speak. But no, so I mean. they had two versions. So they had the steel version and then the titanium version. But the titanium version was actually co-branded with AMG. So if you look on the case back, I don't know if you can just type in. I'll find. Case back, whatever. You will. Ha- there's the the AMG logo with the pistons or whatever the hell they have on it. I will find for you. Don't worry. I, I find case back. Nobody. For you. It's hard to... Uh... There you go. There's the case back. Yeah. Okay. See, there you go. There you go. AMG case back with and pistons. And so they had a deal with them. And so the AMG cars from that point forward started using IWC uh, motif clocks in them. Hell that's yeah. Where, that's where that comes from. Hell yeah. You know what else I found out by reading uh, this book I got recently? Where's the Cars and Watches book? I think it's in the other room. Right. Um, IWC and VDO had a relationship. Oh, they did. Do you know about VDO? No. You know about VDO. I know about VDO. I, know. I didn't know they had a relationship. VDO and no, IWC interested. had a relationship. And it sounds, um, sounds IWC, uh, it actually helped keep IWC alive during the courts crisis because, as Marco will tell you, they built all the gauges for Porsche, Mercedes, and Volkswagen. Yeah. VDO, yeah. VDO. And uh, they are... My dad's old Benz. I think it, uh, probably, more than likely. Anything yeah. German from the 70s. Yeah, yeah, and it was and IWC did a lot of the manufacturing of that stuff. Really? Yep. I and it kept some... I feel like maybe is that I, why that shit's so expensive? Yeah, probably. To, it's <laughs> so expensive <laughs> to fix, man. Oh, <laughs> Thousand bucks a gauge, yeah. almost. Yeah, he's you know? getting. You're gonna make him angry now. No, it's Look terrible. Yeah, I'm, talk so about glad, that up. I'm so glad mine work. So glad. Oof, oof. Yeah. But I okay. So you started. No, back to this. You started okay. with it, with this because of Gerald Genta, and I'm glad that we got that. Yeah. Gerald well, Genta you know, thing, I, I you find something you like and you go for it. But then I realized I couldn't afford anything else, so I just kind of bought what I liked, mm-hmm. things that I'm gonna wear. Um, yeah. And and then the problem was I got a Rolex and. I don't wear anything else. That ruined, that'll ruin you. <laughs> it wrecked my collection. It like what, literally the Hulk. Did. No, the, the Hulk was a Hulk? gift. The, the Hulk was a gift. Fly, those are hard to find. We yeah. haven't had a Hulk on the yeah, show that yet. Actually Throw came... this under here. We have not had any like any Hulks. Rolex Sport Steel Sport model. Yeah. Now. Forget about it. That, Hulks that came, are good. That was a, a a very nice gift from. Um, I love that watch. Someone that. I didn't expect it from it was my landlord. Actually, what? fuck off. We've had the same landlord for thirty years. Wow. We paid his building off for him. So when my dad died, seriously, he was like, yeah. When oh. My dad does. He's like, well, we were going to do this for your dad. So here you go. Wow. Okay, wow. I'll take I it. could live in a place for thirty years, and yeah. at the end of it, the landlord would keep my deposit for sure. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I lived in a exactly. place for thirty years. Yeah, yeah. God, no, 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 it was our, it's our business. You know, our, our where we have our shop. So. I could oh, really? have a yeah. shop in oh. a place for thirty years, and they would still not. <laughs> it must be very nice people. All right, but go on. So. So anyway, that's how the Hulk came to me. Which it, it was, and that's I don't wear awesome. it because when I started, it, it's why don't huge. you wear that? It's, it's fucking enormous. It's not, it's not that enormous. It's forty millimeters. Yeah, not that enormous. But, but the look, bracelet, okay, you look, see the here, lugs? But on the, the right, bracelet. we have the one you wear so, every day. So the super, <laughs> the what you're looking you at is the maxi case fucking. versus the original case. But it's very yeah. simple. The the bracelet is the difference. It's a solid, solid link bracelet. Yeah. It's a solid link bracelet with a machined clasp. Yeah. Right. And the difference is it's. Fucking huge, and it it it's wears big. Fucking, and yet you're wearing a, a ginormous uh, ingenue on a bracelet well, that was yeah. bigger. I, yeah. All right, than that watch. <laughs> but I don't wear it anymore me, because me thinks, I got me the two thinks lines up. the lady doth protest too much. Although if <laughs> I have to be honest, if you a mechanic mm. wears that Submariner every day, mm. and that's how it looks. 
Oh, I take that's it off a testament to the. Oh, you don't. Yeah, I don't. But you don't have to. I, well, you should. I, you should not even have a car. It's the end of me, man. <laughs> that was at the, the watch. Fourteen. One forty sixty. Yeah. One. Yeah. One four. So that is a classic now, uh, because that's the four liner. So it doesn't have the officially certified. That's a two lines up. Yeah. That's a two what? line. It's two well, line. Well, man. four if you count the top two. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Oh, is that how you, you count all four? Well, I don't know. I. I, I only count the bottom two. I thought it was the bottom. Yeah, I think yeah. maybe two lines. The bottom? Yeah, maybe we bo- just, are we doing the bottom? God I damn it, man. Got but, your number of lines right. <laughs> but, <laughs> but stuff. Um, <laughs> the bottom. The bottom. Um, but, you know, that that's actually, that's a watch that's going up now, and it's it's incredible. It's becoming increasingly rare to find because, it, because it's so simple. Mm-hmm. You know, is what they did is they kind of updated that, so then they put... An officially certified chronometer, same movement. They just, you know, regular, you know, got a little certificate from the Cosk uh, people. But so now they had the two other lines on it, and so this is considered much more desirable. With the sapphire crystal, without also, the extra line, yes. it's a little bit shorter, a yeah. little bit it wears a little bit smaller profile, lower profile. Yeah, a little. Um, but I, I got that because I couldn't afford a fifty-five thirteen. They just ran away. Well, all Rolexes are doing yeah. that now. Yeah. I have a 16800, which was sort of the redheaded stepchild it's of like, uh, the Rolex vintage. You call it Neo Vintage because it was the first sub with a sapphire crystal. Right. And the first year they had them, they had these matte dials on them. So that's what's more desirable now is to have matte dial without the white gold surrounds on it. Uh, a lot of firsts with this watch. First one that's 300 meters water resistant. You know, obviously first with the sapphire crystal, blah, blah, blah. There you go. It's a great watch, but it's fast on these, right? Uh, you're getting oh, good. That was like like keep up. <laughs> but nobody wanted them because they had the sapphire crystal. You right. wanted the plexiglass. And now everyone's like, "Oh, it's transitional. It's it yeah. straddles the line." I, I got to have yeah. that too because you get. But you're getting priced out of the other <laughs> stuff. Exactly. So now you know the what? Things I you like didn't sapphire. Consider, I'll stand up and say it. Well, but you know what I love about this? <laughs> I like so mine was actually one of the first good watches I ever bought. This is back in 1992. It'll go to my son. Uh, when he's 18, unless he's an asshole. Uh, and then I'm going to weld an Invicta to his wrist until he comes correct. <laughs> but, but I wear that watch, you know, again, in the pool, in the ocean, in the shower. It's just, I don't worry about scratching it. My wife actually took care of that for me. She dropped it on concrete, so the crown is gouged. There's <coughs> chips on the side of the crystal. I could have had those fixed, but I figure, you know, when Paul gets the watch, that's the story. Your mom did yeah. that shit. Talk to her about it. Don't talk to me. Um, but, yeah, but here's a watch that, frankly... Wasn't any big deal. You could buy them all day long. And now, because everything else is crazy yeah. with Rolex, you have to keep sort of moving to the next one to find something you can buy. I don't even bother looking at vintage Rolex. I don't have that kind of money. My dad had a uh, has a Submariner like Marcos from 1990 that he just had his, last year. It got its yeah. first service. So those in, things, uh, 27 again, you want years. to talk about a locomotive. Yeah, and uh, it was great, actually. The service was like 1000 bucks for After 27 years, it came up really way ahead. But... Uh, they are like what six to eight thousand? Which right ones? Now? These subs? Uh, the one on the right. The with, no date. The, the black. Yeah, no the date. black two line is yeah. was under six. Okay, it was, was. like no, like yeah. uh, like I only they're going I got up it like now, three months though. ago. I think so they're it's, aren't they at eight? Uh, I don't know. I what hope the, not because. I mean, if they if are, you're 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 right? Well, I hope not because so. I mean, you know, I, I don't want them to go out of reach. Like, I just remember what happened with all the cars. But anyway, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, the one, will, the, yeah, so the Hulk. If you can it. get them, I think they're eleven. Yeah, so the Hulks are expensive. The Hulks yeah. are eleven. They're yeah, but you can't buy. You, it's again, it's a waiting list. If you can find them, yeah, find one. Yeah, the um. Here's the thing with Rolex, though. Are they? Is it like they're like the most common valuable thing? Like, it's kind of. It's it's hilarious. I mean, not it's that a I'm commodity. It's it, not. Yeah. They're not rare. They're not even considered like you know ultra luxury. It's like a mid level luxury brand. Sure, you know they, you can sprinkle diamonds on them, and they're going to cost a hundred thousand dollars. But at the end of the day, nobody has the manufacturing capacity. The Rolex they make about a million watches a year, and yet the quality is top notch. Nobody else could do that and maintain that. So I, everybody should have. Them. I mean, they're great. Yeah, like yeah, watches. they're seriously good. But watches. you're going to see yourself coming and going. You know, I'll tell you. See, a perfect example. Yesterday, I took my kids up to uh, Griffith Observatory. So, you know, let's just take a look. You know, they were filming something there. We couldn't really get that close. But as we're walking up, there's this uh, Asian couple. Uh, I guess they were tourists or something. They weren't really speaking a whole lot of English there. But I, they're trying to take a picture, and they had their their baby with them. So the father's holding the baby in the crib, and he's taking a picture, and you got the whole view of L.A. behind him. I, I came by. I said, kids, wait, hold on a second. Do, do you want to both be in the picture? I'll take the picture for you. 
of course. So I'm doing that, and of course I see the dad is wearing uh, an Audemars Piguet. He's got a Royal Oak 15400 on. So I have to go like, hey, because I'm wearing you yeah. know, my AP. It's actually in my Instagram feed if you pull it up. Oh, I, uh, I took it. Yeah, I took a joint picture. Wait, this guy. Yeah, there you go. So I said, that's the baby behind them, actually. <laughs> so we took this wrist shot together. And here's the thing. When I see a cat wearing that watch, I'm going to say something. Yeah, yeah. If he was wearing a sub or any kind of Rolex, nine times out of ten, all they can tell me is what they paid for it. And if I start talking about watches, they're going to look at me like either I'm going to mug them or I'm just some psycho and they want nothing to oh, do with Oh, that's not- yeah, I have a saw, but I would appreciate your AP, Adam. See, but I can't. But I, but I wouldn't know that. <laughs> That's see, true. Yeah, it's very true. That, and I'm going to say something. That's but true. I see a guy with a Rolex. I don't, the I don't say cooler the watch that I wear, the fewer people talk to me about it usually. Because they don't. Know no one is. ever. This this IWC so is, is, the joke. is the DL. The no joke. one ever looks at it. My my perpetual is probably one of the most expensive watches I own. Yeah, I could wear that at three o'clock in the morning, drunk off my ass on the subway in New York. <laughs> The no. dude next to me with a $5,000 Rolex is getting mugged. Yeah, I'll yeah. know what time he got mugged. Because yeah. I'm going home with my watch. And what day. Yeah. And what, you and just I'm take a picture. And the year. Officer, click. Officer, I literally, as the guy was getting beat down and they were taking his watch, this click. is me. You can see him in the background. It's w- the moon You're is doing waxing. a wrist shot with, a, with yeah. the mugging. With the mugging. This is, was, was for the police. What, uh, what kind of... Uh, cell phone are you rocking by the way it's Adam. a good photo it's an iPhone 10 it's a 10 yeah okay yeah of course you it's, can't that's... call them X's apparently they get mad you have to call it a 10 it's actually like a fucking well, that's a really nice picture for a cell hey, phone really the nice quality picture, of yeah. that picture is Every really now and then I do get surprised really, by that uh, the richness of the mm. black and the carbon especially is really good what, yeah, that's a very what I love too is watch. that yeah. literally their pride and joy their baby is behind that but we're like, fuck it. Baby's like in the <laughs> Put some watches in yeah, front. Let's put some yeah. watches in front. Did oh, you yeah, drive? You can kind of see yeah, the bassinet. The <laughs> He's holding the baby. That's yeah. his hand. And we're taking the shot. That's... Well, at least you did you drive through the, the Back to the Future tunnel? Yes, we did. Yeah, it's a very important part of that going to go to the George I tried to make that clear to the kids. It was important. They didn't when you go and you drive through the tunnel the and then you go back and watch the movie and you realize how long that chase is versus yeah. how long that tunnel is, it's like, oh, God. It's well, like the runway the, at the end of we Fast did the Six. We Street Tunnel. And again, I tried to... Guys, we're going through... Just, and they're like, damn, whatever. Oh, they don't care. Uh, they don't care. They're out yeah. there right now. We, uh-huh. They don't care. Like, well, they'll beat them watches. It's a generation gap. It is. There's a... Yeah. yeah. I'm old. Yeah. Well, then... All right. What do we... We need to... Do we need to bring this back to collecting? Do we give a shit? Do we well, care? I, I feel like if if you've been listening and you were interested in building a collection, maybe there was some good advice in here. Definitely. Well, the best advice was what he gave at the beginning, which was buy what you like, yeah, yeah. but not Invicta. I, I do feel like, and, 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 and don't <laughs> go overboard. Never find yourself in a position where you can't afford this. Like any watch yeah. you buy, just know that that's something that you can pay for in full and you're still keeping the lights on, feeding your family. I think yeah. you know, when we talk about the rabbit hole, yeah, and right. it's the same in cars, but it's the same in anything you collect. There's a point where you know reason goes out the door, and yeah, we're crazy, but I don't want to see I, I don't want to see anybody getting you know in a situation over something we don't need. Yeah, and, and if you have yeah. to pawn it, you're not going to come out well. You're not. But, <laughs> Seriously. You know, what I, and here's what I say though, you know, because people, like, oh, you're going to lose all this money on that watch, blah blah blah. I go, well, yeah, but I can still sell it. So even if I don't get twenty thousand dollars for this watch. I'm going to get $12,000 for this watch. And whatever I lost on it, as far as I'm concerned, that was my tax for owning the watch, my enjoyment. The rental fee. Every time I check the time and I smile and then somebody asks me, oh, what time it is? And I have to look again because I wasn't even looking at the time. I just enjoyed having this. Yeah. I feel like that's what you're paying for. Yeah, and I think if you get, you might get lucky. You might like something that's about to be cool, you know? And that, my that's... problem with that is all the watches I have that are worth more than I paid, I don't want to sell them. So yeah. they're technically yeah. that... worth nothing. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. You're not cashing yeah. out anytime soon. Mm. They yeah, are I have, sunk. I have a couple pieces that I got lucky yeah. with, and I, I don't even think about it because I, there's no way I'm ever selling them. Yeah, exactly. You know, I like I like those watches, and I bought them because I like them, and those will get passed down. There's absolutely no way I'll sell them. Yeah. Yeah, so most it's... of this stuff came to me through... <clears throat> excuse me like hand-me-downs and heirlooms and whatever i've really like probably bought four or five of the whole collection but you that's know everything else kind of found me is there's a story to yeah. these things and <laughs> you know whether you're inherited or even you bought it because it it marked an occasion or then a watch you bought for whatever reason and then something happened while you were wearing it there's a story there 
It's a nice thing by it's actually having now done a lot of travel uh, in the last year that I've really been into yeah. watches. Like finding a watch, it doesn't have to be expensive, but like it's a good thing to like go hunting for in a city that oh, you're yeah. not, in you know, familiar with. Or whatever, yeah. yeah, like I Tokyo, went to the by all means, Japan. Is Tokyo, crazy Jesus, I go looking for watches. I'll I'm so you. glad I haven't been to Japan since <laughs> I've been into this. Don't try to buy a watch in Zurich. No, no. no. What they happens have, in they Zurich? Have tons of them. They're just really expensive i went well, to swiss. like uh it's just yeah. so expensive i went to switzerland last summer and i went to like the interlochen the underground watch mall in interlochen yeah. which is like literally there's buses just dumping chinese <laughs> tourists there and i mean it's yeah it's uh but it's i did buy an omega in switzerland and it, it was a good like was memento a good from the trip yeah but it's something that you look at and you i got my joke. taxes back when i left that's true that too you get the vat you yep. get the vat yeah. back but you know what? But at the end of the day, you know, we can joke about it, but that means something. Yeah. To us. Right, because yeah. you got it there and yeah. it got, and all the memories that are associated with it. My Omega traveled with me to Switzerland. Yeah. I had the Omega place uh, on, I don't know, the high street or whatever the main street was uh, yeah. at the boutique. Look at that. Look at the watch. Verify that it was 100% original. Yeah. Got a new clasp, a new strap. It's still on that strap with the same clasp. And, you know, yeah. now I have it, a good memory attached to it as well. So, yeah. You know, it's, I'm saying even this this watch here makes me think of Cameron. <laughs> yeah. that's, oh, that's awesome. Hey, maybe maybe I, not I everybody remember. wants to think of Cameron when they own something. <laughs> but I'm going to be honest with you. There's a story. There. I remember showing you is. the uh, the, the bezel. bezel. I was about yeah. to wait. Say, what because, is that? What does that uh, crown do? So this the, wait, put it under the camera so the rest of us yeah. can enjoy. Because I I forgot to ask before. I was he looking at the. Is, is, that's exactly it. I'm just going to call that how much side knob. The bezel was. I was looking yeah, at so side knob here. Crown there. Now look at that inner timing bezel. Yeah. Wait. If I can do this on camera. Yeah. Oh, cool. So by turning I love this an crown, inner bezel. It's inner snaps bezels are the bezel. Inner and Audi, you know, it's whatever you're into. I I prefer an any. Now the difference on this one, you have that ceramic bezel. I had the steel one, and yeah. you had the steel one as well before this. And the steel one, you have a ceramic ball bearing inside to create that click, mm -hmm. and it's falling into steel cavities. Okay. Not as smooth. Ceramic very, on ceramic with this use. one because of the bezel. It's way smoother. So it clicks so much it's smoother. Very it's sad. just it's like a fidget spinner in a yeah. watch, basically. Huh. The the click is really nice. If you, you wanna try it, yeah. If you I'll wanna be, spin I'll, that. All right, I'll take, click. take it for a yeah. spin. <laughs> Oh, it's a real. It up. is. Shut up, it's right? a really good click, and it's also a really good. Oh my god! I'm sorry, camera. I'm sorry, people. Sorry, there we go. It's We're a back. really good click, it and good click. it's a really good uh, crown. Yeah. Yeah. It's got the rubber. That's part yeah. of the trademark. And also, it design. doesn't come off on camera how much the dial looks like the uh, CPU from the original Terminator. <laughs> Doesn't it? It does. <laughs> I hadn't thought, it, it is. I literally deep. hadn't thought about it. Yeah, this is, is why, this is this why is why you need to hang out with people that are new to watches. When it comes through on your Instagram. Yeah, photo. on the Instagram. Look, They're people, actually, people actually, that are yeah. new to watches make Fair these enough. kinds of analogies that yeah. like people like, wait, what? But then the nerds <laughs> understand it. But we, have, but but we do watch. have to so they know that's a tapissier dial, though. That's what they call that pattern. Oh, that's what they call it? Yeah. Okay, tapissier. Tapissier. And then I have the knockoff version of that in my Ingenuer. Well, ish, ish, ish. Yeah, it's, it's actually its knockoff. own. It's its own design. There's. It's slightly. It's, not a knock it's another That's, pattern. Yeah. It's another pattern. It's dimensional. Which actually, to me, is it's, it's just as iconic in many ways. So, I think because it's not the, the same like matter. square yeah. pattern, it doesn't no. count. Yeah, I think. Okay. Yeah. The Ingenuer is its own watch, and it deserves it. You know, it's got its place in history. I love the colors. Though. What That's can you get these right? engineers for? This this is very nice. That was uh, under four grand. Really? Now, do they, they don't hold their value like no, they um, don't. like a, a thirty two twenty seven that like the one I used to own and mm -hmm. then sold uh, the steel, not the titanium one that we looked at before. You can buy those for thirty five hundred too. Yeah. Oh. However, but condition. used yeah. as they the redid the de the design now. Well, didn't now they? they're just I mean, they suck. They kind of choked. Yeah, I love IWC. It's really one of my favorite brands. The new ingenuer is just it, it lost everything they, that made it special. Well, wait a second. What, what they, they did, thinking. what they did was they brought it back to the very oh, was, beginning. Wait, yeah, but even still, it? it's but even still, it's not. Wait, is it this or this or this? Just look at the yeah. Go down, there. There you go. This. Yeah. yeah. This. Yeah. yeah. Fuck yeah. off. Yeah. That's not correct. Yeah, wait. it is. That's oh, what. That's why on. no one it's, is excited. Yeah, it doesn't look. Not exciting. It's not exciting. That's the that's the problem. Doesn't look. It looks just. It looks way too normal. It looks like a watch. Right. It's a watch. That way to me looks not, like the Aquatimer on the, yeah. Yeah, the chronograph there. Exactly. It looks like the Aquatimer. It's way too normal. It's, it's a yeah. watch. 
Um, Don't they realize that AP does you know well what? with octagons? But here what was the, the thing, though. So, so look, so we can complain all day long that this, you know, they've, they've distilled it down to something and then diluted it and blah. But the fact of the matter was is that the Genta-inspired designs were not selling. Mm. Hmm. They so, were timed you know, out. Here's the thing. Yeah. If you, if you yeah. want nice things... You know, we have to we have to support them. Got to vote with Good your point. Yeah. Manual so transmissions, keep, people. Buy yeah. stick shifts. Save the manuals. <laughs> Save the manuals. If we can, I'm so that's my big. American companies thing. are carrying really manual transmissions yeah, right there. now, and Porsche. The, the well, U.S. And is carrying the Accord manual. That's true. The what? Actually. Oh, the new Accord. The exact yeah. drone. Oh, the Sport. Yeah, yeah, yeah you yeah. can get that. That's in cool. That's nice yeah. <laughs> that's, that's it's nice of them, but I, I, people tweet at me every day <laughs> about Honda. Me cap. People are tweeting at me every day about Honda's second gear grind, though, so I don't know about that. Mm. They want them to recall the Type R because it's everyone. They're all grinding. They should recall gears. all the Type Rs anyway. Just because. <laughs> Just because they're Type Rs. <laughs> Just, and they're Just for being wow. Type Rs. They're not attractive cars. No, they're hideous. They're not, but they are lovely but to drive. I would ima- see. I wouldn't know. The Type R is is lovely to drive. I, I promise you. And it's um. They it's just, like it's big and spacious. It's got like really? a big trunk. Yeah, so it's yeah, the yeah. opposite of what a Honda Civic should be. Kinda, yeah. Right, the well, fit is what a Honda Civic should be, uh-huh. pretty much. If well, they yeah, made a we're, fit, we're that, go down this hole if they made a we, fit yeah, that didn't look like it. a fit, <laughs> this is where we have to tap <laughs> out. We have to tap out because we're gonna start talking about cars. It's all gonna be bad. It's all gonna be bad. All right. So here, I brought something else for you. In that, in one of those cases, is a bullhead. Oh, we were talking about bullheads recently. Yes, that's another Genta design. The other case. Oh, what is it? The Octo. Oh. Oh. I was wearing that. Oh, yeah. We, open yeah. House. we had those the other... We we talked about one of those the other day as well. Yeah. Yep. Uh, By the way, yeah. Bulgari gets a lot of credit for the... That Artissimo is a dope the, freaking yeah. watch, man. It was... The one I he had was very nice. People buying them because, again, we... If you what want is this nice one? Things, people, bullhead. Right? Yeah, I love that design. Bullhead yeah. means buttons are on the top, like yeah. bullhorns. Yeah. I, yep. just, I just read that. But I, it'll fit <laughs> that you, too, so if you want to put it on, that one will fit. I was interested. Yeah. Yeah, that's really cool. That's the first Omega that I saw that's modern and new that I had to own. How what? Well, how it's old modern is this and new, watch? and yet it's, it's brand it's new. Kind of oh, this is brand one new. Year old. Design. It's one year yeah. old. Yeah, they, the original was a was was built in '69. Yeah, and then they didn't make them ever again until last year or the year before. Yeah. Super cool. I hate to ask this. Does it come with any other in any other dial colors? Yes, there are three. Yeah, I have versions. a hard time reading mm-hmm. that. There are three versions of it. Each one they made six hundred and sixty nine. That worldwide. engine turned on that. That one is engine turned, yeah. which is why I bought it. Exactly. I was going to say because yeah. it's it you. It's well, the this only one, one. It's got uh, perlage on the dial, so it's not perlage. engine turned, but perlage. Perlage. God it looks it, it looks really it, cool, it but it's yeah. it actually it's think I'd be hard to read. But the thing is, it's the only one of. But that's why you have your cell phone. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's the only one of the three that they made that actually looks like it took effort, right? The other ones are just printed, uh, and they just don't vibe, you know? Okay. This one looks you. like there's... You want to show it, yeah. Yeah, they, like people put some time and effort into it. I yeah. feel you. So, but It, it has it, the same loom as my Dark Side of the Moon had. And as big hands. as it is, it doesn't wear that big. It wears smaller than it... See. Yeah, because yeah, it's actually it's got that shape to it as yeah. well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's, the it's like angled. I was I was trying to find one of those you know those drivers watches that are canted to the side. Yeah, I was trying oh, yeah. to find one for your right hand, which is where I met oh, you. Oh, that's a good point. This, oh yeah, the Vacheron. The event. Vacheron yeah. event. This is dope. I told you that so, looks you know, nice. Somebody's, somebody's happy. Yeah, I've been trying to get Matt to let for? me show him my watch collection, and then I had to ride your coach. Trying to fucking <laughs> weasel his way out of the show. For <laughs> this a worked out brilliantly. This is very nice, Marco. Really yeah, nice yeah. Watch. I like that. These bullheads are really cool. Well, That's man. a driver's watch right there. Well, there's a, a healthy tradition. Yeah. Where a lot of Seikos had that design. Oh, the Seikos are what were the Brightling and the Seikos Brightling, are what yeah. got me started when I saw them. The then, bullhead designs, yeah. You know, but this one it was it's just right place, cool. right time. Super, super cool. Really nice. It was right place, now, right time. Is that time. one of the the eighty five hundred movements in there? Like what? What is uh, that? The same uh, as the yeah, the coaxial. Yeah, yeah, so it should coaxial. be. Yeah. Yep. It's, it's got a great movement too. Yep. It's very nice. Is it nice? Is it a coaxial? Yeah. Yep. Are you sure? High yeah. five. Oh, okay. And they're then you brought another one of those. Uh, they're kind of all are. Oh, sorry. Coaxial. Yeah. They're all coaxial now. Okay. They really they doubled down on coaxial. Yeah, and they've really improved it since the beginning. It. It's really nice right now. That the coaxials are good. extremely cool. I love I'm a big fan of that one. That. And then the, bu- then the, the Bulgari. Uh, the Bulgari. Uh, sorry, Bulgari, not Bulgari. Yeah. What mm. I liked about this one was all the vodka Red Bull that I had to drink to get it. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> I drank a lot, and I was really hammered. Um, and when <laughs> That's they... another thing. Don't buy watches drunk, people. What is Red Bar about? All right. 
Buy watches, drunk people. There but buy them from you. <laughs> <laughs> just not Invicta. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so this thing was cool because um, the blue, like I, had, yeah. and then they said, that "Oh, color blue is rocking." It's legit. But they also, it's an in-house movement. And so it's like, okay, yeah. it's it's nice to know that they care enough about their watchmaking to make their own movement. And oh, they're stepping up you know, their game. What's yeah. The, yeah. They had what, some really interesting stuff at uh, Basel. What's the picture of North and South America it's, about on the display back? It's the America's version. Mm-hmm. Oh, really? Yeah. It's Does it have ugly bumpers on it? <laughs> it's the Ultra Nero America's. Wow. I think they only made... Uh, <laughs> Sorry, cars. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry, cars. 250 yeah, 250. Of each. They made they made 250 blue and 250 red. Oh, okay. Yeah, so, blue is the way to go. I've, I've seen one. more reds. I've never seen a blue. Yeah, it's a it's one. a lovely watch. That's Crown and Caliber well. sent us the um, the the cr- uh, chronograph that has the El Primero yeah. movement in yeah. it. Yeah, but it, that was it nice felt too. like a tank. It was like really nice feeling. Their new ultra thin from Basel is like oh. bananas. Well, it's now the yeah. I think the new thinnest. Isn't it a tourbillon automatic also? watch? Well, they have a tourbillon. They have a minute repeater that actually uses a forged carbon case and bracelet. Really? Neat. Yeah, it's uh, bananas. Yeah. They're not giving that one away. I think is the in- industry is good right now, right? It it's doing better. Yeah, uh, I think probably they they want you to think it's doing better than it is. Mm-hmm. But as they always say, you know, it's it's the economy, stupid. Um, you know, America has now become probably one of the most important markets. Uh, so you know, but it, 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 just waiting for the other shoe to drop. Right. You know, we're, again, we're still talking about stuff. You know, and for me, it's difficult because you know what I do is based on. The industry doing well and people buying watches, obviously. But you know, at the end of the day, we don't need this stuff. And so, you know, when the economy tanks, it's it's all that stuff that's unnecessary. That's kind of the first to go. Yeah. Uh, how do you justify? You know, we're talking about watches here that cost twenty, thirty thousand dollars, and then we're saying, oh, but a five thousand dollar watch, a two thousand dollar watch, that's that's an affordable watch to most people, even people with money. It's expensive. For a yeah. lot of money crazy? for yeah. Yeah. something you can see on yeah. your phone. You hey, know? yeah. What's up with you, Daddy Warbucks? Like you're spending all that. Cash. <laughs> we have to do the relative disclaimer. Well, every that's time what it we is. It comes watches. down to something. Same relative. thing on the car show. But it's you know? yeah, it's, car it's, show uh, on the car show. Thir- you know, twenty five thousand dollars is a lot of money, but yeah. like the average new car price in America is thirty three. What do you want me to do? Yeah. You know, right. you know. So right. so there always has to be that <laughs> disclaimer. Uh, the industry is definitely better than it was two years ago, but let's see what happens next year. You know, it's. Uh, but yeah, it really comes down to buy what you like, and and it doesn't have to be expensive. No, nope. I mean, yeah, as as part. Americans, definitely buy what you like right now because we are the most important market, I think. Yeah, and if Americans go out and vote with their dollars, there's going to be more designs for this for market us. instead of other markets. And you go, why why would you make this watch and make it fifty thousand dollars? Who's going to buy that? Well, yeah, for a while, it's for the, a different when the market. Chinese market was yeah. red hot. You know, everybody was pouring all their money in. The designs were geared towards that. You can't blame them. Yeah. But uh, but now it's us. So, yeah, people yeah. buy watches. Well, I mean, do you, in the crazy, crazy high end, you know, when the stuff is like $100,000, like yeah. the, and they go, well, this is limited to 100 pieces. Do you think any of them are actually making 100 pieces? Or is it like, it's like, I see, there's a lot of cars it's, where someone it's, goes, it's yeah, I'm going to make a special edition of this. It's going to be 30. And it's like, Huh, you made three. <laughs> Look, they won't make more than that, right. but they're never going to tell you how many were actually yeah, selling. Yeah, yeah. So, so all the Richard Millet? <laughs> they actually are selling those. Really? Yeah. There's a lot of those. Those cats are, are wow. they're, those things are moving. Um, A-Rab money, dude. Yeah. Those are, I mean, they they're rock nice. Them over I there. get them. I, I, I get it. But. Well, but that's the thing, too. It's, it's, you'd say, well, okay, if they're not selling, you probably could walk into any place. and Okay, I want an RM11, blah, blah, blah. But you can't do that. Hmm. I mean, I know people who live. I only know like know two stores that sell them new, can't. and they'll yeah. have like one yeah. or two in the store, yeah. and they wow. won't be the good ones. So they're, yeah, you know, look, get a lot of heat, I think, from some quarters. Oh, sorry. They get a lot of heat from some quarters. You know, people, you know, will, will rag on RM to an extent, but yeah, they're pretty cool watches. The movements, uh, you know, Renault and Poppy was doing yeah. you know, a lot of that stuff for a while. They work with Audemars. Um, I don't know if they're still working with them. I guess they, they are. do, and uh, and then they also work with uh, Vacher Fleur- Fleurier. Yeah. Who is who is who is with So Vacher Fleurier uh, is oh, Parmigiani, yeah. actually. Parmigiani yeah. is doing basically some really Parmigiani. Nice stuff. Well, Parmigiani, yeah. you know, again, their watches might get you know some flack from collectors, but what these cats do behind the scenes for the industry, you know, whether it's making screws for Patek Philippe or making movements for who knows who. I mean, these guys do a lot. 
It's only two hundred grand. It's only two hundred though. Yeah, it's if on I mortgage sale. my house, I might be able to. Yeah, there what's you go. What's the uh, What's the big white one? Well, they have a couple of big white. The ones. big white. I saw Jay Z on stage. <laughs> yeah, the Bubba, Bubba Watson, 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 right? Yeah. But Bubba you know, Watson Jay-Z has might have been got to be the, um, favorite golfer, the right? Airbus. Yeah. The what? That, that, so they did an Airbus version with a chronograph, I think, and. Um, uh, a tourbillon. Air you know, it's all like. Oh shit! Look at that. And it's supposed that. to that look like a nuts. portal. Wow, that's fucking awesome. <laughs> and it's, awesome. it's supposed to look like the window. The so window, that's a right? million dollars. Yo, that shit. I is feel like if Jay Z is gonna wear dope. a giant. It's not. That's white, not the one he was wearing. Know, but that's. How many nuts. of those did they make? That Two? is fire. Well, the, and the cool thing is, like, look at the screws on the bezel there. Oh yeah, you see, those are unique screws. They're not just regular. Are they planes? Crosses? Are they indexed? Is the question? Because if they're not indexed, I'm not in. It does not look like they are. We were so close to selling. You know what? They almost had me. That's so crazy. Do you think if you bought an Airbus business jet, that was that would be the that would be the giveaway? Yeah. Yeah. I doubt there's a giveaway, but there's no. It's an option to purchase. Yeah. Yeah. You can add this. This is the one Jay Z was wearing. The Bubba Watson. Watson. Yeah. That's it. How much are these? These are like four hundred grand, right? No. No? That's a I mean the movement, it, that looks cool. It's yeah. crazy. But that's yeah. not the is that the Torbion? No. No Wait, Torbion. It's still more money than I have. So, so it's a it, lot it more than matter. I got. Yeah, I'm not getting one. I that that movement it's big the look reminds me of like the Angelus. What it's, Angelus it's, is doing. It's, yeah, the their new watches? Yeah, yeah, their new their new watches with like kind of the clear case back and you can see through it with the What's movement Angelus? just hanging in there. So no, Angelus. Angelus. Oh, yeah. Sorry. There you go. Yeah. Oh boy. <laughs> We're getting there. Can you? My uh. Sorry. My I'm grandfather's to... watch was a. It's an Angelus. I'm trying to find. It looks very different than the new stuff they're yeah. making now. The new stuff, yeah. It's I think some of it's an acquired taste, but I have to say that. Oh, I just saw a picture of this. Was on your Instagram? It might have. Yeah, I think Red Bar. We might have put. Yeah, one on. that is like real cool looking. And it's actual an actual dive watch at 300 meters. You can get it wet. You can do whatever you want. But it's a skeletonized tourbillon. What is um, that going for? I think it, I think it's like 35, 48,000. That's, yeah. that's, that's reasonable when you I know it's about reasonable, reasonable, but it's hey, not like it sounds what a Patek is going for. Say that. But a Patek a three, Nautilus yeah, is 5711. Well, but people have heard a, of a Patek. Yeah. You know, Marco, well, that's yeah. it. You know, so it's, it's like selling, you know, yeah, but if the a, Patek SLC is not super light and going, it's four <laughs> seconds a lap faster. Around well, Road America than a GT3. It's but like, I, well, yeah. I couldn't picture you wearing a, a, a Patek, but I could see you wearing one of these. Yeah, more, I would right? rock. No, yeah. I would. I would rock that. Yeah. And, yeah. and, and you'd enjoy it more. Yep. But Definitely. there are other stuff like the U10 is is oh, honestly so my good. my grail from them, and it looks like nothing else. Um, there you go. Oh, Jesus yeah, the U20. Yeah. What the Look at that. fuck is this? Yeah, that's nuts. This? And that's actually black loom this on looks, the hands. Wait, it's a little wait. mid-century modern. So is there. this the movement is outside the of the dial? Just, uh, just the tourbillon over here is yeah. outside. So the tourbillon is on the right is completely mm-hmm. outside of the, the rest yeah, of the so gear it, train. It, it hooks into the gear train over here. It hooks into the gear train yeah. here. And then just go... That's so right? weird. <laughs> yeah, it's it's. Uh, That's so it's like weird. What your is heart the... outside your body? Huh? Yeah. yeah, which What's you don't the... honestly want. No, it's, it's not, not yeah. necessarily a good thing, really, right. but it looks cool. Yeah, and all their watches really, are really the U twenty is what I was referring to. The how U-20. it kind of looks yeah. like the Richard Millet. Yes, how it yes. just kind of floats in midair. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know? Yeah, that's lovely. Why is it every single show we end up talking about shit that's a hundred grand though? Every single show because well, these are it's inevitable. That's not. That's thirty. That's not. I mean, maybe that's. 50, 40. <laughs> it you know, for me, it's a moot point. I don't need to know how much it costs because I know I can't get one. Right, point. but you can appreciate it. I can appreciate and it. And that is yeah. the kicker. You know, yeah. you appreciate the intricacies of what it takes to make something yeah. like that. And Cameron but can I think that's what this what it, hobby, you know, you know, should be about. Yeah. But again, I, have, I, I understand the guy who says, look, I'm going to pay this money, but I want to know that if I have to get out of this, I'm not going to get jacked. And I hate to say it, you buy that watch, God forbid you pay less price. Yeah, you if you have to sell it, you know, the next you're day, wind. you're losing a lot of You're sucking yeah. wind. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I don't feel yeah. like that's, you know, for something that's passion, we shouldn't really be doing that, but I I, I don't blame the person who does. No, it just be, you know, yeah. just because it can be a passion and you don't want to lose your ass at the same time. Yeah. You know? you just cuz you have it doesn't yeah. mean you have it to lose. Exactly. You know, you want to you want to know you can get ass. Yeah. Up, and that's why. That's why sometimes there's safer bets than others, but that's yes. fucking cool looking. Yeah. yeah. They're doing great I mean, stuff. if you if you can afford that, you can probably afford If you can afford that, you're, you're yeah, probably yeah. yeah. We're not yeah. we're not losing a little bit to sleep give. Over yeah. Your, yeah. <laughs> exactly. 
Well, thank you, boys. It was fun. No, it was our pleasure. Uh, we we got cranioats. <laughs> yeah, it, it was our pleasure. Man. Oh, I'm so glad that you yeah. invited me to your show. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you're, wrong, you're invited now. You come back. <laughs> no, Red Bar so Crew on seeing. Instagram. Cranioats on Instagram. Of course, Cameron Weiss on Instagram. Instagram. Of course. Oh, that well, that's not the a Rolex, Rolex Submariner. Date me, me on Instagram. Instagram. Uh, if you got a Porsche in LA, TLG Auto, North North Hollywood, North Hollywood, North Hollywood yeah. TLG Auto. Uh, I got a couple videos of me driving Marcos cars, a Turbo uh, Carrera and a 914.6. If you're interested in those things, yeah. Cameron, want to plug anything? Anything new? Anything good? Um, actually, we have. Quite a bit going on. Plug it. What do you got? Uh, w- well, you just have to stay tuned. We'll we'll have some stuff on this show. I, I guarantee it. All right. But uh, no what is it? Uh, Luft yeah. is coming up, and it's actually like right next to our workshop. Oh yeah, it's yeah. so oh. convenient. I, I'm just gonna walk right over there I from the know. workshop. Are you gonna sleep in the van? Probably. Yeah, you. I'll are. be camping out <laughs> in the parking lot. <laughs> he's got a he's got a camper van. Yeah, like a nice camper van. Yeah. So if you want, come to the workshop. <laughs> and. And we can roast some marshmallows in the parking lot or something. We should the do night that. Before. We should have a pre luft party at the <laughs> yeah. workshop. That oh, should yeah. be fun. Oh. Um, and I'm then also, that weekend. <laughs> right? <laughs> come out that weekend. If anyone really out show. there wants to buy a Weiss watch, uh, Whitney gave me a code. If you, in the comments box in your order, type watch and listen, you'll get a free extra strap and a free strap changing tool. Did you know that? I did know your that. Your wife All set right. that yep. up. Thank yeah, God. Whitney's uh, Whitney's working. Yeah, just type "watch" and "listen" in the uh, comments box. And uh, for me, I don't know. Go watch the Smoking Tire. Subscribe on YouTube. Do the things. You know, Red Bar, Porsches. That's it. That's the show. That's the show. We're gonna get out of here. Get back. Get back to your kids. And by that, I mean yeah. beating your kids. I'm See you later. <laughs>